Miami Vice and Crime Story will not be seen tonight so that we may bring you NBC Sports special presentation of the Fiesta Bowl. The following is a presentation of NBC Sports. Proud to be the network of the 1988 Summer Olympic Games. A year ago at the Orange Bowl, a national title is within Joe Paterno's grasp. But it's not to be. Oklahoma rides off with a 25-10 win. That same night in New Orleans, the Sugar Bowl, Vinny Testaverde sacked eight times, three interceptions, three fumbles, Tennessee 35. Miami 7. Those disappointments are placed aside as the sun rises on a new season. In the next four months, all the contenders will be tested. Only two will run the gauntlet without a loss. In the season's first showcase, Testaverde throws four touchdown passes. Miami 28, Oklahoma 16. The Hurricanes replace the Sooners atop the poles. Alabama will move up to second, but a month later at Tuscaloosa, Penn State snaps the Crimson Tide's 13-game winning streak. The same day, the picture crystallizes further as Colorado upsets third-ranked Nebraska, the Cornhuskers' first loss. Later, Michigan is ranked number two, standing between Miami and Penn State, but the Wolverines lose at home to Minnesota. Seven days later, Penn State crushes Pitt. The Nittany Lions are 11-0. Then on Thanksgiving night, Jimmy Johnson is without his starting quarterback. With Testaverde sideline, Johnson turns to senior reserve Jeff Toretta. The Hurricanes top East Carolina and go to 11-0. Only Miami and Penn State greet the new year with a chance to be number one. Two separate paths, one destination. The steps along the way to a showdown. And now, as the sun sets on this college football season, all that remains is one game, one game for the national title. NBC Sports presents the College Football National Championship. The Miami Hurricanes meet the Penn State Nittany Lions in the Sunkissed Fiesta Bowl. game of this college football season will be played on a gorgeous night in the Valley of the Sun. As game time approaches, it's 60 degrees at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. And we're just moments away from a meeting between two 11-0 teams ranked first and second in the country. And even dozen victories will make one of them the national champion. Good evening and a belated Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. We welcome you to a special game played under special circumstances. The four annual games, usually thought of as the major bowls, were unable to create a championship matchup this year. The Rose, Orange, Cotton, and Sugar all have commitments to various conference champions. They couldn't bring this pair of football independents together. But the Sunkissed Fiesta Bowl, anxious to increase its own prestige, could. So they sweetened the pot for Penn State and Miami. NBC moved the game from New Year's Day to primetime the next night, and a unique college football showcase has been created. It's certain to be one of the most watched college games of all time. To help us cover it, Ahmad Rashad is down on the sidelines with some opening thoughts. Ahmad? Bob, you know, for a college player to play in a bowl game is a dream, but to play in a game that determines the national championship is the Nine ultimate. Point, now, you would think that with all this hype and hoopla around here all week, that it would put a lot of pressure on the players. Well, I've seen some of these players during the course of the week, and I guarantee you, both teams are very loose, and the credit has to go to the coaches. Now, in the last couple of days, you've seen a lot of bowl games, and you see a lot of players mugging to the camera going, we're number one. That's out the window. The battle for number one is tonight. And at the end of this game, the players on one of these two teams will be able to look into that camera and say in all sincerity, we're number one and mean it. You're right about that, Ahmad. And of course, there are dozens of interesting stories on both these teams, plenty of supporting players. Charlie Jones and the rest of the crew will tell you about them as the telecast goes along. But if you look for the single star on either sideline, the guy that most people would think of first when they think about Miami and Penn State, it's a unique combination, a player and a coach. Miami's quarterback, Penn State's coach. Three, two, one, Penn 
United States National Champion. What a tribute to this football team. What a tribute to his coach. The 1986 Heisman Trophy winner is, from the University of Miami and Long Island, Vinny Testaverde. A 60-year-old coaching legend, a fixture at his university, and a 23-year-old skyrocket of a player bound for the pros. Yet they have a few things in common, these two. Each was born in Brooklyn. Like Paterno, Testaverde was reared in a strong Italian-American family. As Vinny passed the Hurricanes to the nation's number one ranking and himself to the Heisman Trophy, Football fans caught many glimpses of Al and Josie Testaverde sharing a season of emotion with their son. The biggest influence has been my, my family and my parents. Uh, they've always been behind me whenever I needed them and whatever I did. And especially with football, you know, they've been always there for me. My father was a great guy. He had more of an influence on me than anything. How much of your career did your father live to see? Oh, he died in 1955. I was just just getting started. I've been four or five years assistant coach. He didn't really. He kind of, he was kept waiting for me to get out of it and go on to something, you know, that was meaningful like law school. So he had a great love for the law. Worked in the courts for years as a clerk, and always envisioned, you know, the great lawyer son. And I was going to do all the things he didn't have time to do. So he never really was crazy about my coach. But Papa Paterno couldn't have scoffed at this. Joe has headed fundraising drives which have brought millions of dollars to his school's academic programs. And his personal donations have run into the hundreds of thousands. And better than 80% of Joe Paterno's players have graduated. I think a good coach has got to stand for something. Uh, and how he, how he can get what he stands for across to people depends. Some you have a friend. Some need you as a friend. Some you gotta be a little and that's so big. You gotta be tough. You gotta make them do things they don't want to do. So until you, they, they, they refine their character. They, they learn to go to class. If they don't go to class. They don't go to. They don't play. Uh, they learn to do things that, because they've got to do them in order to get something else. Until Paterno, UCLA's John Wooden was the only coach ever selected as Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year. SI was persuaded as much by the values Paterno embodies as by his team's one loss record. I'm in awe of it, really. I really am. I think to think that I'm only the second coach ever to get it is kind of, yeah, yeah. I went to bed last night thinking about that, and I said, hey, relax. <laughs> You know, my wife used to say, look in the mirror, when I'd ask her how many great coaches there are, she'd say, one less than you think. I'm not a special athlete. I'm just another athlete that uh, maybe does things a little bit better than others because I've worked out a little bit harder, but uh, not special. You don't think you have enormous God-given ability, rather oh, that you've just developed uh, what you were given? Um, I think God gives everybody the ability, and it's up to them to develop it from, you know, I started at a very early age, and that's why uh, I'm able to do some of the things that I do. Able to turn the dreams of a child into the glory of a young adult. Able to become link number three in the incredible chain of Miami's quarterbacking All-Americans. Able to anticipate being this year's number one draft choice to follow Kelly and Kozar into the NFL. Let's move ahead a decade. Turn the clock ahead to 1997. Where would you like to see yourself? Well, hopefully I'd like to, to still be playing pro football. Uh, and just having a good time with everything and, and making sure everybody around me is happy. Fair analysis, a fair description of, of, of me and my career would be that I was a good, hard-working coach, uh, a decent guy, uh, 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 tried to be a good father and a good, good, good husband, and just generally enjoyed doing what he was doing. So they step into the spotlight again tonight each in his own way, the biggest star on his side of the field, but each with a view of the challenge that goes beyond the marquee. I like Coach Paterno a lot, and I respect him uh, a great deal, but uh, he, that will not put me in awe. You know, I've followed Penn State ever since I was a young kid, but, uh, you know, I'm out there to play a ball game, and... Uh... The problem is not just Finney Testaverde. It's Guys like High Smith and Perryman and Irwin and, and Bratton and the whole bit, that's a big league football team in a lot of other places. So I don't really think we can go into this football game saying we gotta, we're going to stop Vinny and, uh, you know, and we're going to win. I think we've got to be awfully careful what we decide to do. And there is Paterno's coaching opponent, Jimmy Johnson, leading the 97 Hurricanes in uniform tonight out onto the field. Let's listen.
And do you think fans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers might not be watching with special interest as Vinny Testaverde plays his final college game tonight? Tampa Bay, of course, owning the NFL's number one draft choice, and they could use it to select Testaverde. In an 11-0 season, Miami truly was never threatened. Their closest game, week two, a 23-15 win over Florida, but that was at Florida, and it was the Gators' first home loss since 1982. And Joe Paterno brings the Nittany Lions out. wear the blue and white tonight for the Nittany Lions in their 11-0 season the closest they came to defeat and it was a close call in their ninth win of the year they beat Maryland 17-15 and the Terrapins had a crack at a two-point conversion in the last minute and they didn't get it that could have tied the game up well, we're moments away from kickoff. That means it's time to turn things over to our game crew, headed by Charlie Jones, who's celebrating a milestone of his own tonight. This is the 20th bowl game Charlie has worked on network television. And Charles, I would guess, and it's a safe guess, this is the biggest of all. Let's go up to Charlie Jones. This bowl game entirely different than any other of the bowl games that I have covered. The reason, this is for a national championship. Usually a bowl game is a reward to the players. Have a good time, enjoy yourself, and then try and win the ball game. But with a national title on the line this week, everybody's uptight. It's been more like a Super Bowl week. And joining me in the telecast, two men with Super Bowl experience. The first, Bob Greasy. Charlie, the thing I remember most about the Super Bowl week is you got all kinds of time to prepare. We knew exactly what we wanted to do and when we wanted to do it. And we knew what they were going to do against us. The problem being so confident, I remember on the, on the way to the stadium, I fell asleep in the back of the bus. <laughs> Jimmy Cephalo, did you fall asleep during Super Bowl week? I slept through a couple of the games. It's probably why we lost both of the Super Bowls that I played in. What I remember most is the tremendous hype. There's a lot of pressure on the players from their fans, their friends, their relatives, and from the media as well. I once got a phone call from a grade school teacher that said, I gave you an A in math when you're eight years old. You owe me two Super Bowl tickets. These players are guys with the same thing. They want to get on and play the football game. Speaking of the game, Bob, how do you see it? Well, Charlie, I see two different styles of offenses. One very conservative, Penn State with John Schaefer, a leader but not a great thrower. Vinny Testaverde, big plays. Miami can go out and score at any time. Schaefer could not make Miami's team. Testaverde would not have won the Heisman Trophy at Penn State. Interesting statement. Speaking of Penn State, they're the underdog. Can they pull off the upset? Well, I think they can, but they've got a defense uh, Testaverde, obviously. They do it with 22 players. Obviously, the 11 on defense, but also the 11 on offense have to keep Testaverde on the sideline where he's safe by controlling the football as much as possible. It's the national championship. We'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. The Penn State Nittany Lions won the toss and elected to receive. So that means that Mark Selig will be kicking off for the Miami Hurricanes. A look at John Schaefer, the quarterback for Penn State. And the two deep backs will be Jim Coates, number 49, and Blair Thomas, number 32. The University of Miami ranked number one in the country. Penn State University ranked number two. The two head coaches. Behind it. And the moment is at hand. The national championship rests in the balance.
short. Thomas at the 14. Out to the 20. An excellent return man just past the 30 yard line where Bobby Harden makes the tackle 17 yards on the return and the Penn State Nittany Lions led by their quarterback John Schaefer an academic All-America with D.J. Dozier and Tim Manoa Eric Hamilton Ray Roundtree and Brian Cyberling the tight end Conlon Morgan Radisek Wisniewski and Clayton the offensive line. First down for Penn State at their own 31 yard line. Play action. Almost sacked and then dump. Dan Cilio. And Dan Stuff. A loss of 15 yards and the Nittany Lions in trouble from the beginning. Charlie Penn State wanted to change things up at the beginning, so they're going to try and throw the football, but it is Stubbs from the outside coming in to make the sack. And he kicks the Hurricanes off at all. That's number 99, Moss, getting there first, and Stubbs uh, taking care of it later on. Dan Cilio, a big, strong defensive tackle in the middle, had part of it as well. Second down and 24. Dozier then coming out with the football. They're going to mark the ball dead at the 20 yard line. A gain of four. It's going to be third down and 20. And what Penn State wanted to do, Jimmy, was to control the ball. Here's the defense Stubbs, Cilio, Brown, and Hawkins. And the inside pressure from Cilio and Jerome Brown. What do you expect to see? Winston Moss, George Meyer Jr., Rod Carter, the linebackers. And the secondary, Ellis, Bain, Brown, and Blake. I think what they wanted to do is try and open it up at the beginning to change some of the tendencies they had coming into this football game. It obviously did not work on that first down play. Offered in motion. Schaefer with pressure again, and he has wrestled down for the second time in the ball game. This time it was Bill Hawkins who got it. So a pair of sacks opened the ball game for the Hurricane defense. And the Nittany Lions are in immediate trouble. A loss of six is going to be fourth down and 26. John Bruno to kick. David Kintai, an excellent return man, and the Canes will start with outstanding field position. And deep, David Kintai. Kintai at the 42. Stumbles. 43-yard kick by John Bruno, four yards on the return. Bernier down for the Penn State Nittany Lions. And now Miami to move on offense for the first time, led by Heisman Trophy winner Vinny Testaverde. An offensive firepower. Oh, Testaverde, Melvin Brown, Heisman, Irvin, Blades, and the tight end Charles Henry. Maddox, Alekna. Ricosi, O'Connor, and Proven as uh, Matt Patch and for Scott Proven at the tackle. And there was a marker down. And a holding call against Miami, so they will start back at their own 37 yard line. Their 36 yard line, they will spot it. Ball and it is first down. Tight end changes side. That's Charles Henry. Testaverde takes a lot of time. He gives to Bratton. And Bratton outside on the far sideline. Shane Conlon was the man chasing him. Let's look at that defense of Penn State. And the front three of White, Russo, and Johnson. The strength, of course, the linebackers. With Graham Bauer, Giftopoulos, and All-America Shane Conlon. And problems in the secondary. Cobbs, Henderson, Isom, and Johnson. The problem is they're not that tall. It's a small secondary. That's the biggest problem they have. Michael Irvin, 6'2", wide receiver for Miami, is going against a couple of uh, defensive backs, 5'9", 5'9", 5'10", and 5'11". And Testaverde's first pass is on target to Michael Irvin, 
And Irvin has the first down. As he goes out of bounds at the Penn State 47 yard line, he picks up 12 on the play. And Eddie Johnson was the man chasing him. And that's what Miami's going to try to do all night long try to get the ball to Michael Irvin, their leading receiver on the air with 53 catches. Eddie Johnson on the corner, they're giving him a lot of deep support for the reason that uh, Michael Irvin, with that great speed, he runs about a, a 4 6 40. He told us earlier in the week, he said, You tell the people out there I run a 4 4, that's all they need to know. Actually, though, his coach told me it's more like a 4 6. The Penn State He's not going to take any chances. They're going to give Eddie Johnson on the corner some deep help. Last night, Irvin said he ran a late 4 4 9. Yeah, he just didn't say how late, late. it was. <laughs> First down. And here's Heisman. And he is met by Bob White, number 34. Brought down by number 34, Bob White. Interesting story the background of Bob White. Yes, it is. Bob White uh, grew up in Florida in a depressed area, a family from western Pennsylvania. Brought him to that part of the country, tried to get him an education. And Joe Paterno stepped in and said, didn't think he had the grades, but said to him, if you read a book every week for two, for a couple of weeks over the summer, I'll give you a scholarship. He did it. The first book he read, Huck Finn, was tutored by Sue Paterno and turned out to be quite a student at Penn State. Eight of two, and it's second down and eight. No score early in the ball game. Penn State stopped on their first thrust and first opportunity as Testaverde rolls out and is tipped in the air and is incomplete. Highsmith, the intended receiver. And Bob White was the man putting the pressure on. So it'll be third down and eight for the game. Joe Paterno told us early in the week, if you're going to flush Vinny Testaverde out of the pocket, you want to do it early because later on he can be deadly. He also told his defensive backs to stay close because there's no guarantee he's going down when somebody first hits him. Almost a completion down Smith to High Smith. Third down and eight. Matt Johnson checks into the defensive set. And Trey Bauer comes out. They'll go with a four down lineman set. And three linebackers. High Smith, the remaining back. Testaverde over the middle to the tight end, Charles Henry. And Henry down at the 35 yard line. A gain of just over 10 yards and enough for the first down. Eddie Johnson makes the tackle. And so Miami converts on a third down opportunity. And the blitz was coming from Penn State's side. Now that's something Vinny Testaverde likes to see because he knows where he wants to go with the football. That time they sent Pete Giftopoulos, the middle linebacker, and Eddie Johnson, number 39, was forced to cover Charles Henry man-to-man -man all over the field. And again, that's a mismatch because the difference of an, in height. Charles Henry is 6'4", Eddie Johnson just 5'10". 11-20, that is the time remaining. First quarter, we have no score. And the Canes on the move. At the 35-yard line of Penn State. And we have flags on the field. And a little pushing and shoving. There's been a lot of crosstalk between uh, the ball clubs this week. And we expect to see some early pushing and shoving and some jawing. In too. fact, it continued coming into the stadium tonight as uh, Penn State was getting off the bus. Miami was waiting for them, yelling and screaming and hollering. So it continued right up until game time. Here's Jimmy Harper. Delay a game on offensive team. Violation of the 25 second clock takes the ball out to the 40. It'll be first down and 15. Jimmy Johnson, head coach of the Hurricanes, one and three at bowl games, 0 and two at Miami. He was at Oklahoma State prior to coming to Miami. This year, of course, as you know, 11 and 0, with the Canes, 29 and seven. First and 15, and here's Heisman. And he has hit at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for a couple of yards. Duffy Cobbs. The cornerback came up to take him down. Giftopoulos was also there. And they're going to mark it about the 38-yard line. So it'll be a couple, and it's second down and 13. This is dangerous territory for Joe Paterno. Miami with the kind of firepower they have. Second and 13, you say fine, but they are at the 38-yard line going in. They can gamble and do a lot of things in this situation. It's difficult to call a defense when a team is inside your 40. State showing the blitz and it's coming. There's pressure from the outside, but the pass is to Heisman. Spins away. And he got away from the hero, Marcus Henderson, and picked up three or four more yards. A total of 10 on the play. It's shy of the first down. As Isom and Eddie Johnson make the tackle. Charlie, one of the things that the Hurricanes are doing is 
throwing short passes, and they're doing it not to get Vinny Testaverde into the game, but to, to ease their offensive line in. They knew that Paterno was going to try a lot of different blitzes. He went back and got the game film from the Sugar Bowl last year where Tennessee did all kinds of blitzes against Testaverde. What he wants to do is ease his offensive line in. He feels like there's a mismatch in the offensive line of the Hurricanes and his front seven players. And Bob, there was a player change as Tim Johnson went out and Pete Kirkendall came in, I believe, for an equipment change on the far side. Well, one of the reasons that Penn State is going to keep switching their defensive linemen, they want a lot of fresh people in there because they know Testaverde has a great deal of mobility. They want to keep those people fresh so they can continually try to put some pressure on the Miami quarterback. Third down and four, Testaverde rolling right. Lots of time. He throws deep into the end zone. And it is incomplete. Brett Perryman. Just trying to hang on to the ball and one foot in the end zone and he couldn't do it. Duffy Cobb had the coverage and it's going to be fourth down. And we look to see if Mark Seelig is going to come in on fourth down and just under four and they're going to go for it. Fourth and four, 9.39 is the time, first quarter. Testaverde over the middle, tipped, it's incomplete. Henry, the intended receiver, the tight end. The Nittany Lions hold, Giptopoulos for Penn State makes the play and Penn State takes over on down. An interesting call on the part of the University of Miami. It just shows you the great confidence they've got in Testaverde and on their offense. Mark Sealing, their field goal kicker, they have not been pleased with his work so far. It was going to be a long field goal, but they should have had the completion. The ball is dropped by Charles Henry, the tight end, and they sure enough could have had the first down well inside of Penn State territory. We'll be back in just a moment. Jimmy Johnson not only confidence in his offense but I think confidence in his defense on the first three plays that Penn State ran in the ball game, John Schaefer was sacked twice. Dan Cilio one time and Bill Hawkins the other and the Nittany Lions second time in offense from their own 29 yard line no score. There's a water bottle. DJ Dozier. And Dozier is wrapped up at about the 34 yard line. It'll be close to five. It'll be second down and five as Benny Blades was there to make the stop for Miami. Now I think you'll see a more normal Penn State and Miami offense coming in. The Penn State try the two passes, but that's the man that'll be carrying the football most of the time for Penn State tonight. He had about 800 yards this season off of uh, four years ago as a freshman, over 1,000 yards, but was injured much of the time. He changed his style from the big power kind of a running back to a more of a slasher. Now he says he's back on track trying to run people over. We'll find out if that works tonight. Second down and five. Eric Hamilton in motion. Steve Smith. And Smith dives to the 45 yard line. He's got the first down. A gain of 10 yards on the play. But that football came out right at the yeah. end, Charlie, and they ruled that he was down before the fumble occurred. Vinny Blades was there for Miami along with Selwyn Brown. At Penn State, the other thought is to try and keep their running backs fresh. There you see the block on the corner by number 42, D.J. Dozier, allowing Smith to break around the corner. He's a smooth running back, and he's powerful enough to try and push some people around inside. Penn State with their first first down of the ball. Game. A little swing, left flat. It is over the head of Steve Smith, and it is a forward pass, so it is incomplete. And Bill Hawkins was there for Miami. And it is second down and 10 at the 44. A shaky start for John Schaefer, the quarterback. Well, he is 65 and one since his seventh grade as a starting quarterback. The only loss, of course, coming in the biggest football game he had played in, that is, before tonight's contest last year against Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl, did not perform very well through three interceptions. Don't let that number run away from you. 65 and one. 65 and one since the seventh grade as a starting quarterback. Second down and ten. And we've got flat. And we've got a procedure call against Penn State. So it's going to be second down and 15. So you would think that the Penn State Nittany Lions with a total of 17 seniors starting offensively and defensively. Movement in the offensive line. 
and only seven senior starters for Miami that Miami might be the team that is uptight at the beginning. But thus far, it has been Penn State. All week long, they've been loose, and he's probably been the loosest of them all. He's a very quiet leader. When you take a look at Benny Testaverde in meetings and in practices, very quiet. But you always watch the other players going to Testaverde, standing around him, just getting close to him, because he is the man with the talent and the one that drives this team. Second and 15. Dozier to the 49-yard line. He'll pick up 10. And it's going to be third and five as Winston Moss is the man who made the stop. All right, from ground level, DJ is going to come right into your living room. with a nice block from number 57, Chris Conlon. Watch him coming downfield. There he is following the tackle in front, and a block on number 91 on the corner. That's Rod Carter allowing DJ Dozier to get upfield and get the first down. Jerry Hug checks in as a wide receiver for Penn State. Excuse me, it's third down, not first down. Third down and five. Schaefer to throw, has pressure, and the pass is incomplete. Cyberling would have been the intended receiver. He was bumped at the line of scrimmage and knocked down. There was no flag. It'll be fourth and five. Penn State seemed to be trying to run a pick play. Schaefer does like Cyberling, the tight end, crossing across the middle. In that time, the defensive player running to carry and, and cover his player going the other way had no idea that Cyberling was coming toward his side. That's number 96, Dan Stubbs. You see, he had no idea that Cyberling was in his path, so no interference was called. Bruno kicking to Kintai. There's pressure. He gets it off. Kintai, a fair catch, but he wants to let it go into the end zone, but he bounces in the field of play. The ball stays at the one-yard line. 50 yards on the kick, and it will be down at the two-yard line. The officials say we have no score. 7.44, time remaining, first quarter. The Sunkissed Fiesta Bowl, the national championship is brought to you by the Sunkist family of products. The Sunkist name means quality. You have our word on it. By Hertz, you don't just rent a car, you rent a company. And by Budweiser, Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. This is Charlie Jones with Jimmy Cephalo and Bob Greasy in the national championship on the line. Miami with the ball at their own two yard line. Testaverde has completed three of six for 30 yards. No score. Karpinski down the ball on the punt at the two. And Highsmith gets the call, and the defense stops him right at the line of scrimmage. His momentum may take him to the three yard line. We'll mark it there. It's going to be second down and nine. And Pete Giftopoulos, one of the four outstanding linebackers for Penn State, was there. Pick up of one on the play. Ball placed down on the King three yard line. Second and nine. Testaverde. Greg Ricosi is the center. And more than 70,000 fans here at the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. Testaverde to throw from the end zone far side. And it is incomplete. Good defensive play by Duffy Cobb. Michael Irvin, Mr. Playmaker for the Canes, the intended receiver. That's what they call him, Mr. Playmaker. Again, notice how much distance he has to go and try and run the pattern. Just a quick turnout. But that's what Penn State has got to rely on by coming up and trying to knock the ball loose from great, talented people such as Michael Irvin. You see, it's a wonderful throw by Testaverde. You need a strong arm to throw it that far to the sideline, and Testaverde has the ability to do it. Third down and nine. Testaverde with protection and time, and he throws over the middle to Bratton, and it is complete at the 15-yard line. It will be a first down as he picks up 12 on the play. And Trey Bauer makes a tackle. All right, this is the way Testaverde looked at it. He bought some time at the beginning. There you see Bratton, number five, left part of your screen. Testaverde had enough presence of mind to wait for him to clear the linebacker, number 90. That's Giftopoulos. He gets the football in for the first down. And give credit to the Canes offensive line. Maddox, Alekna, Ricosi, O'Connor, and Patchen. They gave him that time. 
and a little breathing room out at the 15 yard line. No score in the ball game. Six and a half minutes to go first period. And here's Bratton. Bratton to the 20 yard line. He picks up five. It's going to be second and five as the hero back or strong safety for Penn State. Marcus Henderson makes the tackle along with Shane Conlon the linebacker. And Conlon is down. This could be devastating to the Nittany Lion defense. It could. They rely on Conlon for many things. He's the leader spiritually and physically out on the field for them. They move him around. Uh, they play him at a linebacker position sometimes, down line. But let's take a look and see just how he got rolled up on. They seem to be looking at the lower leg. There he is, number 31, chasing Bratton down, number five. One of his own players comes from the far side, and he kind of gets leg whip from the corner. We'll take an injury timeout with 614 left to go in the first quarter, and we have no score in the battle for number one. Shane Conlon up and walking along the sideline. There's another look at the play, a sweep to the left side of the Penn State defense and Melvin Bratton the chase and it seems Duffy Cobbs number 16 getting the leg whip no, unintentional of course just trying to make an aggressive play with Shane Conlon on the side out of loose for this set of downs second down and five Miami from their own 20 yard line by Smith by Charles Henry the tight end the Canes retain possession at the 21 yard line now Conlon's replacement is number 84 Keith Karpinski let's find out if Miami ran at him to find out exactly how good of a football player he is no not exactly but it is Karpinski who coughs the ball up from Alonzo Highsmith he makes the play and Charles Henry jumps on it for the Canes now Miami's only lost 10 fumbles all year long they are a very good team as far as hanging on to the football Third down and four. And Chester ready to throw. That's four on the pattern. He goes deep, and it is there. And then knocked loose. And Penn State has the ball if it is ruled a completion. It is ruled a completion. A fumble. And a recovery by Penn State. Duffy Cobbs got it. throw on the part of Vinny Testaverde. You'll see her coming into the picture down from the corner, and this is where you want it as a wide receiver in between the zone. You better have it on the money, and it is. Now, the thing is, Penn State, number 22 with the big hit for the Nittany Lions. That's Ray Isom. He plays like he's about 6'2 and runs a 4'40. The problem is, he's only 5'9 and runs a 4'8 for him. And here's Dozier. Shut off to the right side, counters to the left, and picks up four to the 40-yard line, and it is second down and six. All right, now you're the wide receiver coming downfield. You know it's a zone. you got to find the middle of it. You know you got a strong arm quarterback, and you get it. But there's number 22, Ray Isom, who jars the football away from Michael Irvin. Duffy Cobbs, after a big scramble, comes up with the ball for the Nittany Lions. And Irvin, of course, as you saw, did have possession. It was a fumble, and Penn State with the ball, now second and six at the Canes 40-yard line. Little play action, the reverse. Blair Thomas and played very beautifully by the Miami defense Rod Carter the linebacker the defense of the Canes outstanding here in the first period well, they've been tremendous Rod Carter's got outstanding speed especially if you can run down somebody like Blair Thomas who runs a 4 3 40 then you really have some kind of speed on the outside he's a very good outside linebacker for the Canes They've got two dominating inside tackles with Cilio and Brown. That allows people like Rod Carter on one side, Winston Moss, the other outside linebacker, to roll freely and crush people like the Blair Thomas winning. Schaefer's pass is complete, and it is to Dozier, the leading receiver for Penn State, but way short of a first down. Rod Carter was there for the defense. You know, Charlie, Penn State has come out offensively and gone just the opposite of what they normally do. They normally come out and run the football. The reason Schaefer has not started off hot is because he's trying to throw the ball and it's not working. Miami has good defensive pass coverage. And it's fourth down. John Bruno to kick. Kintai is the deep back. He wants to just hang this one. And he does inside the 10 and out of bounds. 
at the nine yard line. Thirty one yards on the placement by John Bruno. We've got a timeout four oh four time remaining first quarter no score. Let's go back and take a look at one of the big plays so far in this game the fumble by Urban. He's going to run a slant now watch Penn State three deep zone and ice him right in the middle. You won't see Penn State committing their deep secondary very often. They want to play deep, take away the big plays. Now watch Ison. Good vision all the way. When he sees the ball caught, one of the things Paternal says, we're going to let him catch it and come up and try to knock the ball loose. They were successful on that occasion. And Shane Conlon back in the ball game for Penn State. It's a first down for Miami at their own nine as Alonzo Heisman is the ball carrier. He'll pick up about two, maybe three. Let's see where they spot the ball. Average field position at the start of a drive Miami from their own 16 Penn State their own 39 which points out the fact the two stars of the ball game thus far the defense of Miami and the kicking John Bruno the punter for Penn State there's Conlon back in the ball. Game. Second down and seven they marked it to the 12. Graham got him first sack for Penn State. He'll lose nine, but he had plenty of time. Yeah, this is not a sack on the offensive lineman of the University of Miami. This sack was created by a very good coverage scheme by the Penn State defense. Finally, the sack coming by Don Graham on Vinny Testaverde, but plenty of time for Testaverde to go downfield. There simply was no one open. Third down and 16, the ball on the three. Do you go to Urban here? Do you look for their playmaker? Oh, he always looks for Urban. Who else do you go to? He's the playmaker. He's the guy who runs that late 4 4 9. Yeah. And Testaverde wants a timeout. One of the things that Joe Paterno wanted to do was get inside of the mind of Vinny Testaverde to cause him some confusion. He takes a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Bob Greasy, Vinny Testaverde has completed five of nine, 66 yards. I think he's throwing the ball too hard, Charlie, and that happens when you haven't played in a while. He hadn't played in six weeks. You know, he missed a week because of the injury, and also with all the awards, he missed a lot of practice. A little uptight. From the end zone with pressure. He's out to the five, to the 10, to the 20. Has the first down to the 24-yard line. 21 yards, it was third and 16. Testaverde not with the arm, with the leg. All right. Well, this is why he's the Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, throwing the football is one thing. A lot of guys can throw it, but he throws it better than anybody else, and he's got great strength to get away from a couple of people in the end zone. If Testaverde doesn't live in a weight room during the offseason, he's tackling the end zone for a sack, but he gets away and gets a lot of yardage. First down, getting Miami out of trouble, backed up in their own end zone. At the 24-yard line, and he got away from Bob White, who had a shot at him. We had some jumping, and flags are down, but Bob White had a shot at him. For a safety in the end zone and couldn't quite get to him. And there is Bob White, 6'3, 254 pound Dead senior. Ball, ball start. Tied in, tied in neutral zone. That was Charles Henry of the Canes. Jerome Brown talking with his head coach, Jimmy Johnson. Ball back to the 19, and it's first down and 15. Five linebackers in the set now for Penn State on first and 15. And Highsmith jumps to the outside and powers for a couple of extra yards, hit at the 25. His momentum takes him to the 27 yard line. He took Trey Bauer and Eddie Johnson with him. Highsmith is actually a linebacker playing the position of fullback. He was a linebacker through his high school days, an All-American at that position, growing up in, in Miami. Came to the university, and Howard Schnellenberger turned him into a running fullback. He's got the mentality of a defensive player. He wants to attack people, run them over. He blocks very well and does not try to run around many people. If he's got a choice, he's going to run you over. We talked with Highsmith the last I think kind of worked out here in the evening. He said, look at my hands. He said, I have, a beat. I have the hands of a 65-year-old man. Because they keep getting beaten up when he's trying to run the folks down. Second and six. 
Pressure coming. Testaverde hits the open man, Highsmith, who is all alone in the right flat, and he is out to the 42-yard line. He picks up 14 yards before Duffy Cobb stops him. And Testaverde reading the blitz. You're right, Charlie. He read the blitz. Two linebackers on the same side. Highsmith ignores him. Now, to do that, Testaverde has got to know that there is a man free, in this case, two men free. He sees the two linebackers coming. He knows the hot receiver is there. He's a first-class quarterback, and that's why he, one of the reasons he won the Heisman, because he makes decisions like that. And Alonzo Highsmith takes himself out. Darrell Oliver comes in, and Bratton gets the call as Graham brings him down at the 44. Going to be second down and seven. 57 seconds, that is the time remaining in a scoreless first quarter. And like the first couple of rounds of a heavyweight fight. It is, interestingly enough, Miami is controlling the football continually. I imagine the time of possession is heavily on the side of the hurricane. And that, Charlie, is something we did not expect coming into the football game. We thought uh, Penn State would be the one controlling the ball. Matt Johnson and Pete Giftopoulos with the tackle. But we also felt that the Cage would have a quick strike offense. And uh, they haven't been able to put back-to-back -back big plays together. Well, they failed on the fourth down situation early in the first quarter. And had to come from deep in their own territory the last two possessions. Second and six, Highsmith back into the offense of Seth Miami. And Testaverde to throw. Perryman has it at the 42-yard line. He was hit and held on, and he picks up 13 as Eddie Johnson made the defensive play. But an excellent reception by Brett Perryman. Perryman and Brian Blades will alternate at that one spot as receivers. Between them, they have 52 receptions. And we have come to the end of the first quarter. The score is Miami nothing and Penn State nothing in the battle for number one. On the third play of this drive, it was third and 16 at the three yard line. Testaverde to throw, pressure coming from Bob White. Well, most athletes or most quarterbacks aren't great athletes. I think we'll talk to Bob about that in just a few minutes. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> but Vinny Testaverde bench press is 325 pounds. One of the things that Joe Paterno told us this week was that he was concerned that as a defensive lineman getting close to Testaverde, the tendency of a defensive back is to get away from the wide receiver. There's no way they think that the sack will not be made, but Testaverde runs out of people's grasps and does it very well. That was a big play in this drive, getting them out of their own territory. He picked up 21 yards and the first down. Here's a play action fake, and it is too high, and it is incomplete as he overthrows Melvin Bratton and trying just a little touch throw. And Bob Greasy, I, I have the feeling it's a strange first quarter that we saw. Charlie, you mentioned a little earlier that Paterno wanted to get into the mind of Testaverde, and one of the ways he's doing it is he's taking away everything deep. He has three men sitting deep. Testaverde could have to, would have to sit back there 10 seconds for one of his receivers to run past him. The other thing he's doing is occasionally he is blitzing one or two linebackers, so he's mixing it up, but the thing he is doing is taking away any big plays. Testaverde has hit 7 of 12 for 91 yards. Second down and 10. Here's the draw. And Highsmith to the 41. So he has a couple, and it's going to be third down and eight. Let's look at the statistics of that strange first quarter. Rushy yardage, Miami 42 to 4. And look, at that. To and look at the time of yeah, possession. That's, that's the big factor there. The passing team, the University of Miami, you would think that they would not have the time of possession on their side, but they are dominating that statistic. Shows how expert we are. We thought it would be exactly the other way, and if it was this way, Miami would be leading by two touchdowns. Third down and eight. No score in the ball game. Opening moments of the second quarter. Just diverting. All the time in the world. And goes deep to Brandon. It's intercepted. Duffy Cobb. To the 25 and returns to the 30 yard line. 15 yards on the return, and Duffy Cobbs, his fifth interception. He had four during the season. 
And he has both turnovers for the Nittany Lions. He has the fumble recovery and the interception. And what's Vinny Testagretti doing? You know, those shoving matches, that's supposed to be between big guys, linebacker types. But I told you, he's an athlete, and he gets mixing it up in the middle. He gets a little greedy here. He's got Brian Blades, number nine, wide open. There you see him. Bottom of your screen to the right. But he doesn't go to him. He wants the big shot down the middle to Melvin Bratton. And it's Duffy Cobbs who takes it away. His second turnover of the day. At the 30-yard line, Penn State in their own territory. First down and no score. And Schaefer with pressure. And he goes deep. Has a man. He's there. Overthrows him. Roundtree could not get to it. Maybe a step away from six points. This does not look like Penn State. No, it doesn't. Those wide receivers aren't supposed to get the black shoes on. I don't think anybody told them that. They're not supposed to be able to run past cornerbacks. But he had it wide open on the corner, getting behind the coverage. And a good throw would have gotten it. Don Ellis, number 29, the best Miami man-to-man -man cover beaten by Roundtree on that play. Darrell Giles has come in. Jerry Hugg has come in. They're now the two wide receivers. And it's second and 10, and the give is to the first back. And that's... Tim Manoa. And there's Testaverde on the phone with the coaches. George Meyer Jr., the leading tackler for the game, making the last stop. This will be a game of patience for Grindy Testaverde. That defense of uh, the Penn State Nittany Lions, they're gambling a lot. They're gambling that with the short passing game, they'll give them that and that they're going to cough the football up. Well, Miami has done that thus far, but how long will it last? Gain of five to the 35, and it's third and five, as Pomfret, one of the two tight ends, is in motion. Here's pressure, and he hangs it up, and out of bounds, way overthrowing Pomfret. And I think Schaefer was just running out of time. Stubbs and Brown were putting the pressure on him. It's going to be fourth down and five. So Penn State unable to capitalize on the turnover. They go with the play action fake on third and five. I just don't understand it. Who are you going to fool that pretend you're going to run the football in this situation? He throws it far out of bounds, but it was the pressure from Stubbs on the outside that forced Schaefer to get rid of the ball a little bit earlier than maybe he wanted to. And John Bruno with his fourth punt. David Kintai set for the return. And putting the pressure on was Bubba McDowell. A great punt. Taken back at the 14-yard line. Out to the 20, a flag is down, two flags are down. The return near the 25-yard line. Quintus McDonald made the stop. John Bruno with a 47-yard kick. Kintai with a 10-yard return, and we have a pair of flags down. 51-yard punt. And it's going to be a clipping call against the Kings. Preliminary. And so Miami will start this time from their own 11-yard line. And it is the kicking game that continually puts Jordan Miami back, back in the hole. Clipping on the receiving team. Jimmy Harper, the referee, the officials all from the Southeastern Conference. And we've got a timeout with 13.06. That is the time remaining in the first half, and we have no score between Miami and Penn State. Let's go back in time where Testaverde helping out one of his linemen, Bob. Is this a smart move? If you're 6'5 and 2'10 it is, <laughs> Testaverde is big enough. If Topolis comes in and starts a shoving match, and then he takes up for his offensive lineman. Did you ever do that to anybody? <laughs> <laughs> All my offensive linemen were big enough to take care of themselves. <laughs> Miami has the ball at their own 11-yard line. First down, 13.06. Time remaining in the second quarter. Shane Conlon has been replaced now by Keith Karpinski. Conlon, you know, with a little knee problem earlier in the ballgame. Warren Williams is in the offensive set as a running back for the Cavs. The second back is Williams. And he's to the 17. We'll give him about six. It's going to be second down and four. Trey Bauer making the tackle. Mike Russo was also there. Tim Johnson is back in the ballgame defensively. Here are the scoring opportunities of Miami. They've been moving the football there. You see in the middle, 34, 38, and 50 yards on their possessions. But it's where they're starting that's giving them problems. Well inside their own territory on three occasions. Second down and four. Testaverde to throw. Has time. 
Then he slips, steps forward. He's going to run for it for the second time of the ballgame, and he dives at the 20, and they'll mark it down at the 20 yard line. So he picks up three. He's going to be a yard shy of the first down, and it was his old friend Pete Giftopoulos, number 90, and he had that talking conversation with him earlier, who was there for Penn State. That offensive line of Miami, give them credit. That was the patchwork group that the coaching staff at the Hurricanes had been worried about the whole time. Pete Giftopoulos there, you see, making the tackle later on. But that offensive line of the Hurricanes doing quite a job protecting the test of Ernie. He simply doesn't have any receivers open downfield. Two tight ends on the set, third and one, trying to dive the left side was Heisman. And he needed a yard, and I'm not sure if he got it. And the officials are going to bring the chains out for the measurement. You saw the headshot just a moment ago of Pete Giftopoulos. You may have noticed he's from Hamilton, Ontario. And he wants to be a hockey coach. And he played under Canadian rules when he was up there in high school. 12 men on the field, 120-yard uh, field, although they did have four downs when he was playing high school football there instead of the three owned by the CFL. Do we have the first down? We do, yeah. by just a little bit. At the 21-yard line. And Miami continues to control the clock, whereas you thought that would be Penn State controlling the clock, or at least trying to. But the Miami defense has taken the offense completely out of the hands of the Nittany Lions. Time remaining in the first half. No score. Here's Williams. Slides to the outside. Has a yard. That's about it. Maybe two, as Shane Conlon was there. They're going to mark it at the 22. Conlon, number 31, back into the football game. We mentioned the knee problem early on, but he takes on the offensive lineman. Number 73, Dave Alekna, getting stiffed by Shane Conlon. He looks healthy on that play. Second and nine, and a look at the All-America from Frewsburg, New York. Testaverde, and it is there to Brian Blades. And Blades down at the 32-yard line. He'll pick up 10 and should have the first down in round as Duffy Cobbs makes the tackle. Duffy seems to be everywhere. Are they picking on him? I don't think they're picking on him. He's also almost 20 yards off the ball. He's yes. not going to allow anyone to run past him. As we said earlier, Penn State is playing that gambling type of a defense. They're saying, we'll give you those short passing things. We're going to come up and make the tackle and hopefully cough the ball up. But I don't know if that's good enough to beat Miami tonight. How many times are they going to cough it up? They're very good in the turnover department, only giving up 21 all year long. It's a first down at the 33-yard line. And here's Heisman. Well, to the line, Smith, the ball carrier. Tackle by number 35, Trey Bauer. A gain of a yard to the 34. It'll be second down and nine as Trey Bauer makes the tackle. Pickup of a yard on the play. Paterno pacing Ball the sideline. 34-yard line. His overall record, 198 victories. This could be 199, or it could be his 45th loss, or it could be his third tie. Brian Blades on the receiving end of a Testaverde pass at the 47-yard line. A pickup of a quick 13 and the first down as Duffy Cobbs again makes a defensive play. And the Canes now all of a sudden have a quick strike off its underway. you got to watch him here. Uh, once again, it's the arm of Testaverde. Some of the pro scouts were telling me early on that they think Testaverde has a stronger arm and quicker feet than Jim Kelly or, or Kozar, the two people that uh, were here before him at the University of Miami. And certainly that's good enough to show that he's going to be the number one draft choice this year. We've got a flag down on the field. The official spotted the ball at the 46-yard line on that first down. And here's Jimmy Harper. That ball foul. It's going to be a legal procedure against the Cane. Gotten hit with that penalty a couple of times previously in the ball game, and it'll cost him five. Let's look at that time of possession. And that just goes to show that the gambling defense of Penn State, Miami, is settling for the shorty passing game. Testaverde has got to continue to do that to be more patient, take what Penn State is giving them. They'll continue to build up that time of possession and move down the field if they can hang on to the football. First down and 15. Pressure. 
And he picks up the blitz, and the pass is incomplete. Brian Blades, the intended receiver. Well, the Miami uh, fronts uh, seven block absolutely everybody. There you see the blitz coming from the middle. I think that Blades ran this pattern just a little bit too long. When you have that type of a pressure, probably Blades was the hot receiver on the side. He's got to run a shorter pattern to adjust for the pressure. Testaverde was waiting on him and waiting on him. He finally had to release the ball because pressure was on his way. Testaverde down 9 of 16, 114 yards and one interception. Second down. And Vinny to throw again. Over the middle, this one is dropped in and out of the hands of Warren Williams. Should have had that. Very catchable ball. Getting back to Bob Greasy's uh, point a little bit before, this time, Testaverde does not seem to throw the football too hard. Williams simply drops it. But it is a tendency of a quarterback waiting for that big football game to come around with a little bit of a too much on the, uh, the arm action. That time, though, Williams simply dropped it. The Canes now with three wide receivers, Perryman, Blades, and Urban, third down and 15. Penn State with a three-man rush. To the sideline, it is Williams, and he is going to come up short of the first down. He'll pick up 11. He needed 15, and Duffy Combs makes the tackle. Going to spot it at the 47-yard line in Penn State territory. And Jeff Fegels is in to punt. This is his first punt. He, by the way, is from Scottsdale, Arizona, right here in the Valley of the Sun. We ask you if that was a – did he have home field advantage? And what did he say? He said the only thing he did was tell the van driver where to go because they were lost sometime going to a banquet. <laughs> On the return, it is Jim Coach with the fair catch for Penn State. And 34 yards on the punt by Jeff Fegels. We've got a timeout, and we have no score in the battle for number one. This is Charlie Jones along with Jimmy Cephalo and Bob Greasy. Bob, John Schaefer, one of five, three yards. He's been sacked twice. A terrible start. He's a fish out of water, Charlie. He needs a running game so he can throw. He is an average passer at best. He is an intelligent man. He can check off to the run, but he cannot carry this offense by himself. And here is Dozier, the man who should carry it. He's got the first down, and he is outside the 30. Could this be the spark for Penn State? 19 yards for D.J. Dozier. Vinny Blades with the tackle. It's as if Penn State came in here with stripes on the uniforms and white shoes and everything else because this is what they are. They're that... That dry team, the one with the nasty uniforms without the stripes, and the running game. They're the blue-collar team. And now they're getting back to it. D.J. Dozier has got to carry the ball 15 to 20 times during this football game if Penn State is going to generate any type of an offense. And it's a first down at the 33-yard line. Time remaining, eight and a half minutes in the second quarter. And the give is a second back, D.J. Dozier, and he fumbled the ball and fell on it. And Jerome Brown was right there for the Cage. Good penetration that time by Dan Stubbs and Jerome Brown. It seemed like they were in the backfield very quickly, just as the handoff is made. That is Jerome Brown. He gets around the block from the lineman up front. That's number 74, Stan Clayton, who doesn't get a hand on him. The ball is fumbled. D.J. Dozier hops on it for Penn State. Darrell Giles checks in at wide receiver for Eric Hamilton. Second and 11. Here comes pressure. Schaefer to throw. And he is hit. They're going to rule it a fumble, and Miami has recovered. Bill Hawkins. He covers the fumble. Jerome Brown caused it. And a loss of nine and the turnover and the Canes have it. All right, it seemed like Schaefer was unaware of the player making the tackle down below. That looks like Jerome Brown. The ball comes out and it seems like it didn't even touch the ground. Did that hit the ground? Maybe rule is an interception. Let's find out. Here's Jerome Brown, number 98, getting to him. The ball does not touch the ground. No, it's an interception. It's an, it's an interception. That's right. Hawkins gets an interception. And Miami with the golden opportunity at the Penn State 23-yard line, first down. And here's Heisman. And he is out of bounds at about the 15. Trey Bauer was the man chasing him for Penn State. So a gain of eight yards on the play, and it's going to be second down and two. Ball placed down on the 
Penn State 15-yard line, second and two. Highsmith, 10 carries, only 31 yards at the 15-yard line. And here's Highsmith to the left side. And he rambles to about the seven. He's got the first down. Jerome Brown, the All-America defensive tackle for the game. Eddie Johnson with the stop. It's going to be first down and goal to go at the seven-yard line. And with Penn State seeming just... Jimmy, they've been hanging on, just hanging on throughout the first half. Well, they've been fortunate by getting the good field position as far as Penn State's defense is concerned. John Bruno has been keeping them deep in their own territory. This is the first time Miami has had the good field position with their offense. Conlon coming out. Karpinski is in. And it's first down goal to go. Testaverde to throw. And it is there. One yard line. Charles Henry, the tight end. And he is upended by Marcus Henderson. Second down goal to go at the one. All right, there you see from ground level, Testaverde looking at his tight end the entire way. He was the primary receiver in between the zone. It's unusual that a team will run a zone this far down inside their own territory. But Penn State is going to do it continually, and it's Charles Henry down in close. Bratton and Highsmith are the running backs. And it is Bratton over the top. He is met, but the ball just breaks a plane. That's all that it has to do. It is a touchdown. Scoring from a yard out. Melvin Bratton, who scored eight touchdowns during the season, scores the first touchdown of the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. Here it is. You want to know why Melvin Brandt will be a first-round draft choice when he comes out of school? That's why. Because he's not afraid to throw his body around and leap over the top. He knows the linebacker is doing the same thing from the other line, the other side of the line of scrimmage, but he gets in for the touchdown. The extra point is up, and it is good. As Greg Cox has the extra point, and Bratton scores the touchdown. Penetration good. Good by the Penn State Nittany Lions on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage, but it's tough to do it when somebody goes over the top and Bratton gets the first score of the night. Miami 7 0 over Penn State. With six minutes and 38 seconds left to go in the first half, Melvin Bratton scoring the first touchdown of the ball game from a yard out. It was set up by Bill Hawkins with that interception. And the plays thus far and the total yardage thus far. Penn State to, held to 20 total yards. Miami 204, 40 plays to 17. And Mark Seelig to kick off with Blair Thomas and Jim Coates set for the return. At the 15-yard line, here is Coates. Hit at the 20. Slips a couple of tackles. And returns to the 25, maybe the 26-yard line where Bernard Clark, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. Coach with the ball. Tackled by Bernard Clark. 1986 Orange Bowl, 10 of 22, 74 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions. Coming into this uh, 1986 football season, because of that performance, some of the Penn State fans were calling for Matt Kisner, the backup quarterback, to take over the reins for John Schaefer. That did not happen. Schaefer had a good football year. We'll find out if Joe Paterno decides to go with Kisner if this continues. And here's D.J. Dozier. And Dozier, a little head fake, and he'll pick up about nine yards on the play. Benny Blades makes the tackle. Dozier, six carries, 45 yards. His D.J., not his name. William Henry is his name. Why do they call him D.J.? His dad, uh, his dad name was Deacon. He was Deacon Jr., became D. Jr., and then D.J. Normal progression of a first name. Makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> it does to me, too. That's the scary part. All right. Second down and three. As he spotted at the 33-yard line. Dozier showing a little motion. And here's Steve Smith. Derwin Jones is there for the Canes defense. Brought down by number 22. We said earlier that D.J. Dozier is a tough football player, but so is Meyer right down the bottom of your screen. There you see Dozier and Meyer going at it. A couple of blows by both sides. Hey, it's over, guys. You can stop it now, all right? 
Yeah, DJ points to hey, yeah. he, he was punching me. A gain of a couple to the 35. It's going to be third down and one. George Meyer Jr., of course, his father, the great Miami quarterback. down and goes out of bounds just shy of the 40 yard line as Don Ellis moved up from defensive cornerback. So a market at the 39 and a first down. And now back to the type of offense you expect to see from Penn State. And later in tonight's game we'll be selecting the outstanding player from each team and Sunkist will donate a total of $5,000 to each school's general scholarship fund in their names. But why wait an entire quarter to go to the offense that's carried you to 11 and 0? Here we go for a national championship football game, and Penn State is trying to throw the football with John Schaefer. As Bob said, it's not the way to get it done. And here is Schaefer again. They want to set a screen, and he throws it up for grabs, and it is tipped and knocked around, and is going to come up incomplete. Stubbs was putting the pressure on John Schaefer, and he just threw it up for grabs. He certainly did. Stubbs is the career sack leader at the University of Miami. He's got 30. He had 17 alone this past year. There you see the pressure from the top of the screen. He's running right past. We might have had a holding call over there by the offensive lineman for the Nittany Lions. He seemed like he had a handful. Number 57, Chris Conlon. And it was Schaefer who threw the ball away. And if it wasn't a good defensive play by D.J. Dozier to knock the ball down, it would have been an interception by the Hurricanes. And it's second and ten. And here is Dozier on the counter, started left, came back right, and sitting there waiting for him was Jerome Brown. So they'll lose a couple of yards, and let's go to Bob Greasy. Jerome Brown is having an outstanding day, mainly a pass rusher. Jimmy, you ask about the change in thinking for Penn State. Joe Paterno told us yesterday he was going to change some things, both defensively and offensively, and obviously trying to throw first and run second has not worked for him tonight. And he has to throw here. It's third down and 12 deep over the middle. It is there. It is come. Eric Hamilton pulls it in. A big first down, converting on third and 12. Tolbert Bain makes the stop. And a gain of 23 yards. Jimmy. Good vision on the part of John Schaefer. Eric Hamilton was not his first choice for a receiver. There you see a couple of pumps. Then he finally pulls it back and delivers it. A good, strong throw. Tolbert Bain in to make the tackle. But good vision on the part of John Schaefer. And let's find out now if that good play by his part will affect his confidence and maybe get him to throw a few more completions or not. First down at the Miami 40-yard line. Miami out in front, 7 to nothing. Just under four minutes left to go in the first half. And here's D.J. Dozier stepping to the outside. Defense strings him out and pulls him down right at the 40-yard line. Tolbert Bain was there for the Canes. And it'll be second down and 10. Check that, the 39-yard line. Second and 10 at the Miami 40. Jimmy Johnson, the head coach of the Canes. Tim Manoa, the first back through. And Manoa rambles to the 20 yard line. He has 20. Back to back plays of more than 40 yards. Randy Shannon with the tackle. And here's another look. Good blocking on the part of the offensive line of Penn State, opening a wide gap for the running back Tim to get up and through. They spot it at the 21 yard line, and it's a first down. And here's Manoa again, and he just plows, ball pops loose, but the whistle had been blown at the 17 yard line. He'll have four. It's second down and six as George Meyer Jr. and Randy Shannon make the tackle. Tim Manoa is from Tonga. And his parents had never seen him play in a college football game. That until the uh, Pittsburgh game, the last uh, regular season game for the Nittany Lions this past year. And the team, the Penn State uh, seniors and the rest of the club, put a money together, enough money to send them from Tonga to watch their son play in the first ever college football game for them. And Manoa comes out for a breather. Steve Smith comes in. And Schaefer to throw. 
And it is high and it is incomplete. He was going to Eric Hamilton. Don Ellis had the coverage and it's going to be third down and six. Schaefer is now two of eight for 26 yards and let's look at the reverse angle. This is a post corner. The receiver first broke toward the post then back to the corner but a good play by the quarterback on that side number 29 Don Ellis to break it up. And it's third and six at the 17. 209. That is the time remaining in the first half. Miami leads 7 0. Here's Schaefer rolling and throwing. The pass is complete. And Noah has it, and he is out of bounds at the five yard line. He picks up 12. It'll be first down and goal to go as Penn State tries to piece together a 74 yard drive. Benny Blades makes the tackle along with Victor Moore. Charlie, this is the type of passing that Schaefer can do best. Half row, throw to your back, the easy stuff. Don't get too sophisticated. It's important that he stays within himself and not try to be another Vinny Testaverde. And the Canes want a timeout, so they stop the clock with 2.02 left to go in the first half. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back. Miami leads. The Nittany Lions are threatening. Here at the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl, the national championship on the line, Miami leading Penn State 7 0 thus far in the first half until this drive. The ball game offensively and defensively dominated by the Canes. And now Penn State starting at their own 26 yard line. John Schaefer, maybe with a little bit more confidence, DJ Dozier, and Tim Manoa, the running backs, Eric Hamilton with a key reception. The ball is to the five yard line. It is first down and goal to go. Penn State trying to go for the tie. With 2.02 left to go in the first half. It's Manoa. Ball is loose, and it is recovered by Penn State. It was Daryl Giles who recovered the fumble. Second down goal to go at the four yard line. Manoa spinning out to the left. It's just knocked loose. Second and goal from the four. Offensive changes for Penn State, defensive changes for Miami. Nine seconds now on the 25 second clock. Penn State will have to hurry. Three, two. They get it off with a second to go. Schaefer rolling, wants to throw. It's open to run, and he dives for it. John Schaefer from goat to hero as he scores the touchdown. Massimo Manko will now try to go for the tie. Matt Kisner to hold. Greg Truett the snapper. And it's good. And we are tied at seven. All right, Schaefer on the bootleg. He's got two options here. Either the run it in or he has Cyberling, his favorite tight end, in the corner of the end zone. There you see that little fake helped him out. The defensive back leaped in the air, and it just gave Schaefer the corner of the end zone. He dives in for the score. 74 yards on the drive. The reaction of John Schaefer as he moves the Nittany Lions in 12 plays for the tie. We'll be back with a kickoff. A minute and 14 seconds left to go in the first half. Be sure to stay with us at halftime. Bob Costas, of course, will be here. Ahmad Rashad and Bob Costas will be live with President Reagan from the White House. Massimo Manka will be kicking off for Penn State. J.C. Penny, number 21, the deep back to return for the Canes. J.C., it's James Claw. And he was James, Jim, and Jimmy until the 11th grade when a a writer in his hometown of Youngstown, Ohio, said, you know, James, that's J.C. And in one of the great names in sports. And in merchandising, too, of course. Manka kicking off. 
And Vinny takes it at the one yard line. He sees to the 10. Has a block, makes a cut at the 20. Nice return to the 25 yard line. So he has 24 yards on the return. And the scoring drive of Penn State. 74 yards, 12 plays. Use up some time. 524, and Schaefer with that four yard run. And Miami now from their own 25 yard line with 107 left to go. Do you go deep right now? No, I, st I still think you stay with your offense. They've got the ability to move it downfield. No sense in going deep right off the bat, although that's what Tess Pretty <laughs> likes to do. And has the time, and now the time runs out as he goes short to Bratton, and it's incomplete. And it'll be second down and 10. Duffy Cobbs picked up the coverage. Miami with only one timeout remaining. Now 101 left to go at second and 10 back at their own 25. Charlie, I think what Penn State has done is frustrated Miami and Vinny Testaverde. I'm not giving him anything deep, and I think Paterno is very happy to go in at halftime 7 7. He said he hoped it would be a defensive struggle. Second and 10. Four out of the pattern. Here's pressure. A stiff arm pushes him away. Turns back, fires, pass is complete as he goes to Perryman, and he is cut down at the 35 yard line by Duffy Cobbs. And it's right at the first down marker. And it is a first down. 51 seconds, that is the time remaining. And of course, the clock wound when at the ready from the referee. Two man rush by Penn State. And the pass is low to the outside and incomplete. Urban, the intended receiver. And I think that the mind games of Joe Paterno is paying off because Testaverde is not as sharp with the long layoff that he's had. Well, this is what they're doing unusually. The Nittany Lions are blitzing people, and, but they're playing zone behind it. Usually when you blitz somebody, before you mentioned the stiff arm that uh, Vinny Testaverde gave to number three, Marcus Henderson, he's the strong safety. Normally, you would expect to find man-to-man -man coverage with that situation, but they're playing the zone, forcing Testaverde to try to find the open area. He does have open receivers, but he has to find them. Second down and 10. Four men on the rush. Goes deep to the left and finds him. This time it's Brian Blades. And Blades is out of bounds at the 42-yard line in Penn State territory. A gain of 23 yards on the play. Eddie Johnson was there for Penn State. We have 30 seconds left to go in the first half. And we are tied at 7. They mark the ball at the 45-yard line in Penn State territory. With 18 seconds and counting on the third on the 25 second clock and 30 seconds left in the first half. Seven seven tie as Perryman comes wide to the near side and Irvin is in the slot right. High Smith goes out in the pattern Bratton stays in the block and here's the pressure. Matt Patchen. Makes the play for Miami. And it will end up as a loss of 22, and Miami takes their last timeout. So we'll take a timeout with 21 seconds left to go in the first half and be back in just a moment. Let me make a correction on the loss of yardage. It is now second down and 22. The ball back at the Miami 43. We are tied 7 7. 21 seconds left to go in the first half. Both backs stay in the block this time for Testaverde. He wants to go long and he does far side. And it is incomplete. Brian Blades, the intended receiver, and Eddie Johnson breaks it up. And it's going to be third down and 22 with 13 seconds left to go in the first half. And Eddie Johnson just takes a slight gamble here. If he misses this ball, Brian Blades goes down the sideline with no one to touch him. There's a long throw on the part of Testaverde, but he did have enough on the ball to make sure that Johnson did not get in front for an interception. Testaverde now 13 of 24, 161 yards, and a touchdown. 13 seconds left to go, second quarter. Conlon comes on the blitz, can't get to him. Testaverde rolls, throws, pass is complete to Urban. Urban heads for the sideline. He wants to stop the clock. He goes out at the 34 yard line with three seconds left, 23 yards on the play, and Mark Seelig is in with a field goal attempt. 
and he is hit this year from 47 48 and 49 yards but a flag back at the 44 yard line and that's the reason you see Sealy coming back to the sideline and the penalty will be marked off against Miami and here's the call from Jimmy Harper beyond the line we threw the ball in loss of down in eligible receiver beyond the line when he threw the ball and it is a loss of down with three seconds to go loss of down. Charlie, with the way the Penn State defense is playing, they're playing so deep it's a prevent. Miami could try a Hail Mary, but hope for an interference. But interference in college is different than pro. I doubt if we'll see it. And they go with a straight handoff with Highsmith trying to break it up front. And he goes to the 42 yard line of Penn State as time runs out in the first half. He picks up 18 yards on the play, but the first half comes to a close. And we are tied at 7-7 between the Hurricanes of Miami, the Nittany Lions of Penn State, in the battle for number one. Now let's go down to Ahmad. All right, Coach. One of the things you wanted to do is to keep their offense off the field. You did that pretty well, first half. Well, no, nah, we didn't do it. We're not right, doing well enough offensively. We've got to do a little better job uh, getting into some kind of a rhythm. We're jumping all over the place. I thought that last drive was pretty good, but we've got to do a little bit more of that. All right, that's what you expect to do coming out the second half. Get some more rhythm. Uh, well, we got to get a little better balance. we got to do a little better job with our pass protection. Uh, they're doing a couple of things in there that... Got us confused and Brown's tough. We got to figure a way to get maybe double him up a little bit. All right, good luck to you, coach. All right, back up to you, Charlie. All right, thank you, Ahmad. So the first half has come to a close. A little shaky in the start. The Hurricanes defense exceptionally well. They set up the touchdown drive of Miami's. It was only 23 yards in four plays. Bill Hawkins started off with the interception. Then Penn State came back with their long drive of 74 yards. Schaefer scoring from a yard out. It's 7-7 seven, seven tie. Halftime activities will continue in a moment. And that means that we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. The battle for number one, and at halftime, nothing's been settled yet. Penn State 7, Miami 7. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Costas. Coming up on the halftime show, we'll, of course, have highlights. Ahmad Rashad will visit with Jim Kelly and Kurt Warner, a pair of NFL stars who played respectively in the college ranks with Miami and Penn State. We'll also be privileged to have a chance to talk with President Reagan, who has been watching the game tonight from the White House. But first of all, a chance to catch up on some national and international headlines. And with us is broadcaster and football fan, Tom Brokaw. Thank you, Bob. Good evening, everyone. The known death toll now in that Puerto Rico hotel fire now stands at 95. Investigators have been searching the black and ballroom and the casino section at the base of the DuPont Plaza Hotel for the remains of the missing and for any signs of incendiary devices. Several tourists say that they were warned that there would be a strike and bombing. So far, however, officials have not reported finding any evidence of arson. Students in Beijing took to the streets once again today. The Chinese government has condemned these demonstrations and it has also made a few arrests. But diplomats in the Chinese capital say that the government there hasn't cracked down harder because so far, the students have failed to influence the Chinese masses. Now this. There was some very nasty weather in the northeastern part of the United States today. 15-foot waves broke over seawalls in Massachusetts as high winds joined with unusually high tides caused by a rare alignment of the sun, moon, and earth. Beach houses in Long Island, New York were surrounded by the ocean, and all roads leading to Atlantic City, New Jersey were closed off. The rain was heavy along the coast, and close to a foot of snow fell in some places inland. President Reagan returned to the White House from a West Coast vacation today. He goes into the hospital on Sunday for prostate surgery. He's also going to submit to Congress a $1 trillion budget. That's the biggest yet. It does include some aid for the Contras, but it also calls for deep cuts in many domestic programs. Orders to American factories jumped more than 4% in November, but analysts say that's not quite as good as it sounds because most of that increase came from defense spending and from some efforts to beat the new tax law. 
I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News. Now back to Bob Costas, my partner. Robert. Tom, thanks very much. And along with the rest of America, enjoy the second half. Let's catch up on highlights of the first half. Although we're tied, Miami did significantly outgame Penn State through most of the first half. However, the punting of John Bruno was a key for Penn State. He had a couple down inside the 10-yard line, including this one in the first quarter, which was batted back and then down and around the one. So Miami had some bad field position. And the Penn State defense turned in some big plays. Watch this reception as Testaverde throws to Mike Irvin of the Hurricanes. He's hit by Ray Isom, and the fumble is recovered by Duffy Cobbs, the senior from Alexandria, Virginia, who had a big first half for Penn State. We're in the second quarter here. Melvin Bratton is Testaverde's intended target. But here comes Cobbs again with the interception. And another Miami drive is thwarted. We'll move ahead to second quarter action now with Penn State in control. And John Schaefer, who did not have a good first half, has the ball slipped from his grasp, and Bill Hawkins comes up with it for Miami. They are able to capitalize after taking over deep in Penn State territory. It's Bratton who scores from the two, and they lead 7-0. However, sparked by the running of D.J. Dozier, Penn State drives deep into Miami territory late in the half, and Schaefer rolls right and dives into the end zone to tie the game up at seven apiece. Now let's go down to the field and join Ahmad Rashad. All right, Bobby, these universities put out some great football players, and I'm here with two of them, Jim Kelly from the University of Miami and the Buffalo Bills, and Kurt Warner from Penn State and the Seattle Seahawks. All right, Jim, you first. Your impressions of the first half. I'll tell you what, it's tough. Our defense looks what's uh, been going on so far. I tell you, it's going to be exciting. You never can tell what Coach Turner is going to throw at you. What about Vinny Testaverde? We impresses me in this first half. Oh, yeah, he is a strong arm. Uh, receivers going to have to start hanging on the ball a little more. But uh, in due time, it'll come around. But it's going to be a good second half. I'm looking forward to it. All right, Kurt, Penn State in their vaunted running attack. What about D.J. Dozier? I think D.J. has played well. Uh, there's been uh, periods that he's gotten the ball and then he hasn't gotten the ball. And I think if he gets the ball on a consistent basis, I think he's really going to do well. A lot of people thought that Miami was going to blow this team right out of here. What do you think? I don't think so. The Penn State defense is just it has a tradition of, of stopping highly talented uh, Heisman Trophy winners. And, <laughs> and, and they've done a good job thus far. Uh, but uh, we have a second half and uh, you never know what can happen. All right, talking about Heisman Trophy winners, at one time at the University of Miami, they had Bernie Kosar, yourself, and Vinny Testaverde. You two went off to uh, become big stars in the National Football League. What do you predict for Bernie? Uh, Vinny, I think he's going to do. His, I think he's going to do the same thing. Uh, he's got a strong, strong arm. He had great people around him. And to be a good quarterback, you have to have the receivers and offense line. He's shown that he has it right here. It's a matter of what team he gets hooked up with. It looks like uh, maybe Tampa Bay. And I wish him all luck in the world. It couldn't happen to a better guy. And hopefully, he can go on to do what me and uh, Bernie has done so far. What was it like being on a team with all those, with all three quarterbacks like that? I tell you what, it was tough at the beginning because uh, you know you had Bernie and then you had Vinny. It was just a matter of uh, who's going to get the chance first, and Bernie did. And I think Vinny has a lot to thank uh, Bernie for in one respect, and that's uh, leaving a little early so you get his chance to show what he can do. And uh, I'll tell you what, three good quarterbacks, and hopefully it'll be one after him. All right, now let's talk about your season with the Seattle Seahawks. You guys at the end of the season were as strong as anybody in the league, but you had a big dip in the middle. That's what happened. Uh, we hit like uh, a rock wall uh, about four games, and we couldn't get the ball moving down the field at all. And it was just everything was going bad against us at that particular time. But at the, the last five games of the season, I thought we were probably the hottest team in the NFL. Uh, just unfortunate that we couldn't put it together and win enough games when we were having that down spell uh, to maybe go 11 and five instead of 10 and six. And you can't complain. That's the way the system is. And if you lose, you're out. If you win, you're in. And that's just the way it is. Put you on the spot. Denver, New England on Sunday. It's you, you are putting me on the spot. Yes. Because they're in Denver, I would, I would go with Denver. But. Uh, I have a lot of respect for New England. Oh, too late. You went with Denver. <laughs> Cleveland Jets tomorrow on the spot. Cleveland Browns and Bernie Kosar. All right. All right, Bob. Back up to you. Okay, Ahmad, thanks very much. In just a moment, we'll visit with President Reagan from the White House. But right now, while we have an opportunity, and as is customary on these college football telecasts, we bring you a message from each of the schools, Miami and Penn State. The University of Miami is an oasis of academic excellence located in one of the most beautiful suburbs in South Florida, Coral Gables. A private institution with just 8,000 undergraduate students, the University of Miami is selective in its recruitment. Students here receive a personalized education that gives them the tools they need to succeed in any endeavor. 
Included in our wide range of majors are some of the most unique programs in the country. Innovative courses such as music engineering and marine science. A variety of honors programs are available to top students, some assuring freshman entry to our medical school, law school, or other graduate programs. The University of Miami is a major research institution, giving students access to professors whose research is pushing the very leading edge of knowledge. It's a great place to learn, a great place to live. Expand your horizons at the University of Miami. In 1906, Homer Braddock graduated from Penn State and left the Vale of Old Mount Nittany. Although he lived to celebrate his 100th birthday, he never forgot his alma mater. In 1984, Homer Braddock died, still remembering. To Penn State, he left over $5 million, asking only that it be used to create scholarships in Penn State's College of Science. His legacy is now bringing some of the country's highest achieving students to Penn State. I was impressed with the research facilities and the fact that I would be able to do research as a freshman. And right now I'm doing research in protein metabolism and the breakdown of amino acids. And I will begin becoming DNA work in relation to this particular problem. Homer Braddock remembered Penn State. For generations, Penn State will be remembering Homer Braddock. And our thanks to Miami and Penn State for providing those messages. In some places, this may have been billed as an interview with President Reagan. In fact, there's a time and place for everything, and this is not the time, we don't have sufficient time, nor is it the proper forum, to conduct a true interview. Instead, it is a brief chat with our chief executive, and we're honored to have been asked to do that. So let's switch now to the White House in Washington, D.C. And Mr. President, as a former sportscaster yourself, I wonder if you'd critique the work of Charlie Jones and the NBC crew tonight. Well, I think it's been just great, and I've been enjoying every minute of this. I, of course, have to tell you that having done all of my broadcasting on radio, I, uh, I don't envy those of you who have to talk on television because I liked it better when the audience had to wait to find out from you what was going on. Mr. President, I'm sure as a former sports broadcaster and a man experienced in the media, you'll appreciate this problem. The nation can hear you, and I can't. So I'll just have to roll with the punches on the interview as we're having some technical difficulties. I know that one of your first experiences as a sports broadcaster, in fact, your audition was to recreate a football broadcast, and that's how you got your first job. Could you tell us about that? Yes. As a matter of fact, my first time on the air to broadcast was to broadcast the Iowa-Minnesota uh, homecoming football game. But the uh, it's true, the audition was, you might say, almost an accident. I had been knocking on doors and asking for jobs for a, a long time and hitchhiking around the Middle West and uh, discouraged once again as I left the office of a program director, WOC Davenport, WHO Des Moines, I said, just expressed the desire that I'd like to be a sports announcer. And fortunately, the elevator wasn't at the floor when I got there because this gentleman came hobbling down. He was somewhat handicapped and two canes, caught me at the elevator and said, what's that you said about sports? I told him uh, that's what I wanted to do. And he asked me if I could imagine a football game and tell him about it. And I said, I thought I could. He took me in a studio, my first time to ever be in a radio studio, stood me in front of a mic, said when the red light goes on, start broadcasting an imaginary football game. Well, I didn't exactly imagine it. Uh, the previous season, I was just fresh out of college, the previous season we had won a game in the last 20 seconds with an off-tackle smash in which I, as the right guard, was supposed to take the first man in the secondary, which made it possible for our quarterback to to make the play and in the game I missed my block and I don't know to this day how Bud Cole scored as he did. I didn't miss the block in the recreation. <laughs> I delivered a block that I described <laughs> in great detail and cleared the path for Bud Cole. But it was a I chose to go in the fourth quarter in about 15 minutes of all of that and then that fabulous touchdown finish and finally just grabbed the stem of the mic and said, that's all. 
kick and do. He came in and told me to be there Saturday. I was broadcasting the Iowa-Minnesota game. Mr. President, I know you have strong feelings about the proper place of college sports in America, keeping it in proper perspective. Would you share those thoughts with us, please? Well, yes. I think it's awfully easy to get carried away and sort of make players uh, feel that they're not really students of the college. They're sort of hired hands to be there and play. Uh, I hope that isn't widespread, and I don't think it should be. I think that uh, the old college try and the college spirit is really the thing that, that makes college football great. And I think that the students are there, or the, the players are there as students, and uh, they should be there with that in mind. Mr. Mr. Think, President. I, yeah. Go ahead, finish your story, please, sir. No, no, I was just, I was just going to say I think that uh, a number of schools are coming around to that realization. I, I first heard what it was like from a fellow who had been a star quarterback on a big university team. And I'm not going to name the university, but he quit and he came to the school that I had gone to, a little college in Illinois called Eureka College. Because he lived in an athletic dorm, he ate at an athletic table, uh, he just wasn't, didn't feel that he was a member of the student body. And he came to that little school where he loved it. Mr. President, we all wish you well as you face surgery in the next few days. And we want to extend from all of us here at NBC Sports our thanks for the time you spent with us and a happy new year to you. Well, thank you. A happy new year to you and uh, your good wishes. It really, uh, what I'm going in for is kind of a breeze. I've been there before, so uh, don't waste any sympathy. I, I don't feel ill at all, but um, I'm enjoying this game, and it's, it's been a thriller, and uh, I'll be watching for this, for this next half. Thanks very much, Mr. President. The kickoff is coming up shortly to start the third quarter, and we'll continue following these messages from your local stations. All right, Coach, your impressions the first half. Well, it uh, was quite a battle. Uh, that's what we were expecting. We knew it was going to be a 60-minute ball game. Uh, a couple of penalties really hurt us uh, there in the first half. I felt like uh, if we hadn't had the penalties, we could have put some points on the board because, you know, Penn State didn't really stop us. Uh, we turned it over a couple of times, and then we had penalties that stopped us. What could you possibly say to your team at halftime? Well, yeah, I told them that uh, they had two little plays offensively that we got caught out of position on, and we we could we, we corrected that, and so we can stop them defensively. Our offense, we stopped ourselves. If we eliminate the turnovers, hold on to the football, eliminate the penalties, we'll put points on the board. All right, Coach, good luck to you in the second half. Okay, thank okay. you, Okay. All right, back to you, Charlie. All right, thank you, Ahmad. I have, I have one thought, and I uh, hope this doesn't upset anybody, but every time you talk to an announcer or a former announcer, if you notice, when two announcers are talking together, the voices get lower and lower. Did you notice how President Reagan's voice, he lowered his voice the more, the, the longer? It's just natural. We all do it. All right. By the way, there is no overtime. We are tied 7-7. There's been some talk about it. Of course, it was turned down by the NCAA. Manka will be kicking off, and Melvin Bratton is the deep back. We even asked the officials about it. The officials said, when the game's over, we leave. That's right. So <laughs> if the teams decide to stay on the field and go at it for another quarter or so, the officials won't be there. Second half is underway. And Bratton takes it at the one yard line. And Melvin is out to the nine, slips a tackle at the 10, makes a nice move, and returns to the 15 yard line. So he has 14 yards on the return for Melvin Bratton. We asked him, do you want Mel or Melvin? He said, Melvin, my mother prefers it. Here's a look at the statistics in the first half. Jimmy Cephalo. Well, yards passing a key point to this game. John Schaefer with just 38 yards and uh, completely outthrown uh, by the University of Miami and Vinny Testaverde. We expected that. The thing we did not expect is the time of possession. Look at it down there. 17 minutes for the University of Miami and just 12.50 for Penn State. We expected more running out of the Nittany Lions and maybe more time of possession on their side of the ball. A long layover at the end of the season. Now the two teams with a half underway. Let's see if they can turn loose here. And Bratton, the ball carrier, hit at the line of scrimmage, spins and picks up a couple to the 17. It's going to be second down and eight. Trey Bauer with the tackle. Testaverde tonight. 
And that's his attempts, completion, and yardage spaced out. 10 yards, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and more than 30. As you see down the bottom of the screen, very few completions between 20 and 29 yards, just one none past 30 yards. That's because of the deep zones that the Penn State uh, defensive backs are playing. Second and eight. Testaverde, little play action. As time drops it over the middle, it's dropped. Alvin Highsmith. He's a good receiver, too. He just, that happens. You just drop one. Well, he's more than just a good receiver. He really has done a lot for the Miami offensive passing game because a good blocking fullback is not expected to be that good of a receiver, but he can do it all in here. Crossing action underneath with the two backs, a check down, a little bit of a dump pass on the part of Testaverde, and he starts running before he has it firmly in his grasp. Third down and eight. First third down opportunity of the second half. Testaverde, far side, Irvin juggles it, and it is incomplete. So two opportunities slipping away from the hurricane. Highsmith and Irvin, and it is fourth down and eight. Uh, Penn State said coming into this game they they were going to allow Miami to catch the short balls, but they had to come up and hit them. What happens to a receiver sometimes, if you go across the middle, catch a ball and get hit, enough times you start looking behind you and not concentrating on the football. Michael Irvin did it that time and dropped the ball. Beagles with his second kick. He gets it off. A flag is down. He was hit. They'll bring it all back. Here's Coates on the return. There was running into the kicker. 51 yards on the kick. A six-yard return. They're going to bring it back. Now remember, it was fourth down and eight. And of course, as you know, in college ball, you can be blocked into the kicker. Still a foul. And let's see what happens. Ray Isom has a clear shot to it. The fullback comes over and does hit him. But as you said, Charlie, Isom could not help yep. it. But it is still a foul still in a college foul. football. Yes. And they bring it out to the 22-yard line. Five yards. Here's the call. And the officials calling for a timeout. And this is the head coach, Jimmy Johnson. Of course, he can, if he thinks that there has been a misinterpretation of the rules, then he can call for a conference, not for a judgment call, but for a rule conference. So he may want to, in this case, if it is not enough for the first down, he may want to refuse it and take the kick because it was an excellent kick. And that is what the call is going to be. 51 yards and a six yard return, yes. You got to do it again. You can't get much better than that. He is blocked into it, but as you can see, Daryl Oliver, number 37, with the block, and there's no way that Ray Isom can get out of the way of Figo's punting the football. But in college ball, again, that is a flag. And Jimmy uh, Johnson with the good call because it was a great punt, and Penn State will take over possession at their own 38-yard line. It was five yards on the penalty and not an automatic first down, and that's the reason they went back and took the punt. And Penn State has the ball at their own 38-yard line first down. Going with a double tight end set. And Pomford in motion. And here's Dozier. And Dozier just fights his way to the 42-yard line. Four tough yards, and it's going to be second down and six. As Winston Moss was there, Rod Carter was there, and George Myers. So all three linebackers got into the play. And there is George Meyer. Notice the gloves that he has. Those are really offensive lineman gloves, and he's taking the padding out and cut the fingers out to give him a better touch, a well, you, better feel. You mentioned a running back taking a beating with his hands. So does a middle linebacker delivering those forearms. <laughs> they also have the hands of 65-year-old men. Yes. Second and six. Schaefer taking a lot of time. A fumble on the snap from center, and Miami says they have the ball. Penn State says they have it. Let's see what the officials say. And Penn State retains possession at the 42 yard line it's going to be third down and six and you will recall in the first half that Miami's touchdown came on a 23 yard drive and that was after Bill Hawkins we thought it was a fumble recovery but it ended up an interception because the ball never got to the ground set it all up and it's third down and six Jerry Huggin is a wide receiver. And Schaefer back to throw, and here comes the pressure. Pretty good protection. Tipped, it's in the air. A diving interception. They say no, could not get to it. And that was Salwin Brown trying to get there. 
Brian Cyberling, the intended receiver, is going to be fourth down and six. And that means that John Bruno will be kicking and David Kintop will be the return man for the Canes. And John Bruno, an excellent exhibition of punting in the first half. Well, he's been Penn State's best weapon thus far. He put a couple of balls inside the 10 yard line, and as you see, a 42 point average. And this is his fifth punt. Here's pressure, and he gets it off. And again, it was Bubba McDowell with the pressure. Kintai at the 20 to the 25 and nailed at the 27 yard line. 39 yards on the kick with an eight yard return. Bubba McDowell, who almost got to the punt, had five blocks during the regular season. We've got a timeout and we are tied at seven. This is Charlie Jones along with Jimmy Cephalo and Bob Greasy. Charlie, the, do the Hurricanes have got to be frustrated because they've averaged 38 points a game. They've gone a little over a half and have only scored seven points. The key here is patience. And Testaverde rolling left. Has lots of time. He goes deep. Urban battling for the ball. It is incomplete. Outstanding defensive play by Eddie Johnson. So Testaverde now 13 of 27, 161 yards and a touchdown. Three, that's the first time that he has just gone for all the marbles. It is now. Irvin downfield, Testaverde scrambling around. Normally a quarterback is not able to throw the ball that far. The crowd is booing because they want an interference call on Michael Irvin, but he was going after the football, and no call is made. Nice play by number 39, Eddie Johnson. And that is Testaverde's first attempt for more than 30 yards in one fell swoop. And it's second down and 10. Miami at their own 26-yard line. We're tied 7-7. Just over 12 minutes to go. In the third quarter, Testaverde steps away, steps away again, got out of the arms of two rushers, and finally the third man gets it. Shane Conlon finally got it. Don Graham was also there. Testaverde is strong. Oh, he's got strong. a lot of strength. He squats 500 pounds. He's 6'5", 218 pounds. Now watch him here. Two defensive players have a shot at him. He's looking downfield, puts the ball in his other arm. He can't get it. First of all, he gets away from Don Graham, and then another player takes a shot. No luck there, and it takes Shane Conlon, the All-American number 31, to finally come up and make the tackle. I think the only thing brought him down this past season was that motorbike, wasn't it? And a bag of hamburgers. And a bag of hamburgers, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Third down and 12. There's pressure again. He gets it off. The pass is complete. Not going to be a lot of yardage, but Perryman spins away. He almost got away. And it's fourth down. Eddie Johnson makes the play. The Nittany Lion defense now taking over control of the ball again. Early on, it was the Kane defense of Miami. And now Jeff Beagles will be kicking. And Jim Coates is the return man. There's a look at Beagles. And there's Coates. Fourth down and six. And Coates takes it at the 22. And there's going to be a clipping. Called against Penn State. 46 yards on the punt, a three yard return, and flags were dropped. And it's going to be a clip call on the Nittany Lions. Darrell Fullington was down very quickly for Miami. And I believe the clip on Marcus Henderson. The microphone, we have been informed of Jimmy Harper, the referee, is out. But it is a clip, and you could you could really pick that one up, Jimmy. I mean, there was no question on that call. No, there was no question whatsoever. And down the other end, it was interesting. Ray Isom was putting pressure on Fiegel's the punter from Miami one more time, but he held up way before he got to anywhere near the fullback. Darrell Oliver didn't want another running into the kicker call. And there's the clip call. We've got a timeout. 10:59. That is the time remaining. We are in the third quarter. It is seven and seven battling for number one. John Schaefer, the senior quarterback for Penn State out of Cincinnati, Ohio, three of 10, 38 yards. We mentioned this number at the top of the telecast as a starter, starting quarterback since the seventh grade, 65 and one, only one defeat. But Bob, he's having a terrible night. He's having a tough time, Charlie. I'll get back to it after this play. Okay, let's see what he does here. First down for Penn State at the 13. And he gives to DJ Dozier. And DJ out to the 16 yard line. We'll give him three. It's going to be second down and seven. Dan Cilio with the tackle. 
along with George Meyer. Charlie, what Miami, what Miami did on the first series coming out of the second half, they took their strong safety out and put a fourth linebacker in. They're playing a gap eight, and they're saying, you try and throw on us. Obviously, you're not going to be uh, able to run very well against a gap eight type of defense, but they're forcing Schaefer to make the plays. They say, you beat us. And it's second down and six. And here is Dozier. And he slips through and still keeps going. And one of the problems with a gap eight when you put so many men up front is that if you can get past them, if you get past those eight men up front, you've got some running room. You do, and many clubs have gone to the gap eight against Penn State or an inverted defense where they take the strong safety and put him into a position as another linebacker. Here it is here, number 22, Shannon on the outside going in to make the tackle, but not good enough. Dozier is known as a knuckleball runner, and you see why. It's tough to get a good shot at him. He continually spins, has good late drive, and gets enough yardage for the first down. He picks up 15 to the 32, and it is a first down. Now with 10, 15 left to go in the third. And we are tied at 7-7. Schaefer back to throw. As time stands in to Dozier. Dozier spins away. And he's to the 41-yard line. So he'll pick up nine on the play. It's going to be second down and one. And Myra makes the tackle. Charlie, what you like to do is throw short to try and beat this gap eight. What you're going to have to do is fake he looked downfield. There was nothing there. He's looking for Cyberly. 91 is tight end, and if he doesn't have his tight end, he likes to go back to his halfback. This is a halfback tight end offense. In fact, in the last four games, Cyberling and Dozier together a total of 25 receptions. That's the last four games of the regular season. You saw flags went down. So you're right. They ended up the season with an offense to the uh, to the running back and to the tight end, and they just pick it up here. Charlie, to go back and explain what a gap eight defense is it's simply a defensive man in every gap of the offense between the guard and tackle between the, the uh, guard and center all the way down the line so it's tough to get any blocking lanes and any place to run the football what it comes down to then Miami's going to say go ahead if you're going to beat us you're going to beat us on the arm of John Schaefer or not at all exactly and the penalty against Miami for five yards and it is a first down and here's Dozier with the counter and he slips a tackle he'll pick up a yard maybe two on the play Rod Carter, the linebacker, was there to meet him. And he likes to run this counter. A little counter step to the right and come back to the left. They'll swing everybody to the right side and bring only one blocker in front of him. Well, they pull that onside guard, and he's got to follow the block of the guard. And he's been reading it much better as a freshman, as a sophomore. Yes, he had some more yards, but he felt that he was not running behind a blocker as well. Now as a senior, he's setting his blocks up, and he has become the punishing runner that he was early in his career. And now replaced by the sophomore player, Thomas, who many feel uh, is going to be just as good, if not better. And the gift to the first back is Steve Smith, and Miami is waiting for this one. Dozier, by the way, 13 carries and 70 yards rushing thus far. And the clock continues to tick in the second half, and we're moving on eight and a half minutes, time remaining in the third. So the gap eight works now, third and eight situation, and obviously it's passing down, and that's what Miami wanted to do, force John Schaefer to throw the football. So it's third down and eight. A look at the clock. We're in the third and tied at 7-7 in the battle for the national championship. And let's watch from the end zone. We're looking now through the defense of the Cavs. And you can see exactly what Bob Greeson was talking about with the set of the eight players. In the gaps, it is up. It is in the air. It is intercepted. It is Selwyn Brown. And Brown to the 40-yard line of Penn State. 18 yards on the interception return by Selwyn Brown who this past season did not have an interception. Well, he was injured for most of the year, Charlie, and now healthy once again for this football game. Dozier's upset about something. He was on the sideline, was not on the field to play for that particular down, and ran onto the field, wanted to make his opinion now to the officials on the field, and they are discussing it, John Schaefer and D.J. Dozier, but they will not win the argument. And the ball is at the Penn State 40 yard line. The Canes have it and they have a first down. And remember, they took a turnover in the first half at the 23 yard line and went in to score. They scored in four plays. And here's Highsmith, the sweep to the right side, turns the corner and is spun under at the 33 yard line. He's got seven at second down and three as Duffy Cobbs makes the play. Where Duffy Cobbs has done everything. Yeah, Duffy Cobbs is a big hitter on the outside, but when you run into somebody as big 
As Alonzo Highsmith, this is what you get. Highsmith, again, he's a linebacker playing fullback. He doesn't care about his body. He just wants to get an extra yard. 65 yards in 13 carries for Highsmith. Warren Williams checks into the offense. Second down and three. Just a birdie to throw. Here's pressure from the outside. Pass is complete. First down, it is Williams. And Williams is stacked up at the 24-yard line. Keith Karpinski was there for Penn State. Let's take a look back at that interception just a moment ago. The wide receiver downfield, that's Ray Roundtree, a crossing pattern. It's trying to go in between the zone and a poor selection on the part of John Schaefer. Obviously, Roundtree not open, and Brown with the interception and got a lot of yardage out of it, setting Miami up in good scoring position. And you saw what D.J. Dozier was complaining about. That was an illegal chuck that was downfield because he was already past him. You can chuck anywhere in college football. There's movement. And as long as you stay in front of him. But if he gets past you and you hit him, it's illegal. As long as the receiver is in position to block a defensive back, then there can yeah. be contact. Yeah. But once he gets a stride of him or beyond, there cannot be any contact. And there was contact. They got away with one. This is procedure call against Maddox. Well, let's take a look right at it and see if there is or not. No, I think so. Downfield, of course there Hamilton, is. Downfield, yeah. that's right. Number 30, Hamilton is yeah. the one that was bumped. Yeah. And with the penalty, the ball goes back now to the 29-yard line. We'll mark it the 30-yard line. And it's first down and 15. Penalty yardage, as you see. And just a birdie to throw. Has all the time in the world. Slips a tackle and then is dropped at the 28-yard line. And we've got some pushing downfield, but that's to be expected. Shane Conlon makes the play at the 28. Gain of two, and it's second down and 13. Testaverde just does not go down with one shot. No. Let's take a look at it down the bottom, number 34. That's Bob White working against the tackle. Now watch him. He swipes at the football. Testaverde is strong enough to hang on to it. I told you he bench presses quite a bit. I tell you, he's a strong football player, bench pressing 250 pounds or more than that, isn't he? Second and 14, the ball at the 29. He just pushes everybody out of the yeah, way. He does three and a quarter he benches. That's the number. Charles Henry, the tight end to the 21 yard line. So he'll pick up about seven on the play. It's going to be third down and around seven to go. Conlon again making the tackle. And remember Shane Conlon with that knee problem early on in the ball game, and obviously it wasn't anything of any consequence because he's been back ever since then. He has not been as big a factor as we thought coming into the football game. Penn State likes to move him around. Strong safety even on occasion as a down lineman or somewhere anywhere in the linebacking crew. But maybe because of that injury, we don't know. He simply has not been as big a factor as we thought he would be. Now Penn State with five linebackers in this set. Testament early, 16 of 30, 184 yards. As time slips a bit, throws, it's intercepted by Conlon. Conlon stumbles and falls. I think he saw six points. I think he heard me from up here, too. <laughs> Testaverde with a poor selection, threw it right in the hands of Shane Conlon. He was open. He was the only one open on the play. Take another look at it. Shane Conlon, the middle of your screen. Trey Bauer, number 35, moving back. A big zone. Now, where is he throwing the football? Trying to fit it in between, but it's Conlon, the only one in the area. And if he doesn't stumble, he gets a few more yards. We're tied at 7-7. Seven, seven. We'll be back. Go back to the last interception. Three linebackers stacked inside, and here is Conlon. Now the other two will split. Conlon will come over here, and I don't think Vinny Testaverde saw him stacked in the middle. One of the new looks that Penn State and Paterno pull out for Testaverde turns into a big interception. And Penn State has the ball at their own 25-yard line. A look at number 31, All-America Shane Conlon with that interception. Eric Hamilton in motion. And Tim Manoa, the ball carrier. Gain of six to the 31. Second down and four as Dan Stubbs makes the tackle. We're moving on the five-minute mark. Time remaining in the third quarter. And we are tied at 7-7. The turnover is Miami three and Penn State two. And these two ball clubs ranked very highly in the Division I statistical group of turnovers and takeaways. 
In fact, Charlie, Penn State has not fumbled their last three football games, and Miami has only caught the ball up ten times on fumbles this year. Here's a fumble, and Miami has the ball. Winston Moss recovers the fumble. And just as you say it, here it is. That's that direct line down to the helmets of the players again on the field. Take a look at it from the reverse angle. It doesn't appear that anybody touches the running back. Tim Manoa just pops straight out of his arm. Very little pressure from anyone. That's all on Manoa. It seems it was a good handoff on the part of John Schaefer. And a first down for Miami at the Penn State 31. And the give is to the second back through Warren Williams. And Williams goes to the 25 yard line. He's got six. And it'll be second down and four. Four and a half minutes. That is the time remaining in the third as Trey Bauer makes the tackle. It is Miami seven and Penn State seven. And there's a look at the disappointed Tim Manoa. Second and four. Little play action fake. And Testaverde is brought down by Pete Giftopoulos. And very seldom do you see that happen. Giftopoulos with his first sack. And that is the third for Penn State. We're really waiting for him to step away from that would be sad. It is the first time that uh, he was tackled uh, from the first player that got to him. It seemed to be a mistake on the part of the University of Miami. Either that or it was a naked bootleg. You see the miscues on the part of the Hurricanes. A lot of drop passes and three turnovers. Eight penalties. They have set a team record this year for the most amount of penalty yards. It's 770 on the year. They seem to be continuing that trend tonight. Third down and 12 back at the 32. And Testaverde rolling right. And he throws deep. Has a man urban and he trips. They're going to call pass interference on Penn State. And I must tell you, I'm not sure of that call. I thought it was an inadvertent tripping. And of course, it's a 15 yard penalty if it is pass interference in college football, not at the spot of the foul unless it's less than 15 yards. Well, when you're a receiver, there is no such thing as inadvertent tripping. You can see it appears that way, though nobody was going for the football. It was a little bit overthrown. They just got tangled up right at the end. Number three, Marcus Henderson going after it. Ray Isom is the he, one. He call. trips on himself. He does. He tripped he over trips his on himself. Too. Now, what you're looking at here is the reason that there is an instant replay in the National Football League. He trips himself. Now, they don't have instant replay here. They're not in college football, but that's the kind of call that instant replay was created for. Let's take another closer look. Watch Michael Irvin, his two feet from this angle. A little tough to see, but it does not appear that Ray Isom, number 22, no. ran into him at all. No, from the other angle, you can tell. Do we have that other angle again? Here it is. Now, watch his feet. He trips himself. There, he's not tripped. There, he's not tripped. He no. hooks himself. Whoop. First down at the 17-yard line. And Williams is pulled back. All right, we're going to take one more look, and then we're going to bury this one. Because <laughs> we've taken it up. But let's take one more look. Hey, everybody makes mistakes. All right, now, is there any body action between number 22, Isom, or not? It doesn't appear to be. It just appears to be simply Michael Irvin tripping himself. And a bad call. But it is second down. The ball at the 14-yard line. Second down and seven. Oh, you hope that the number one doesn't fall on on that one call. Here's Warren Williams to the 11, has three. So it's going to be third down and three. Charlie, I disagree. Okay. I think Isom did trip him, and if we can get another look at that sometime, I think that there was some tripping, and uh, Irvin did not trip himself. Did my eyes deceive me? Well, I'm sure we'll have another look at uh, opportunity. Well, I thought we put it away, but I can bring it, it back. Okay. But, uh, All right, they're searching for it in the trucks. All right, here it is. All right, Bob. There we go. He beats the jam. Yeah. Now watch right. Next step, right there. You see it? Isom 22 hit his left foot and tripped it. No, I think that he hit Isom's left ankle. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> you always did have those good eyes, Bob. <laughs> and, and I guess that's the reason that they don't have replays if you want to get down there. Third down, it is. What happened? Did a receiver slip? There was nobody over there. 
That might have been a mistake on the part of the receiver. There you see Testaverde looking at his receiver and pointing downfield. He might have made an adjustment on the move, and the thing is the receiver and the quarterback have to make the same adjustment. That's how you get interceptions when they don't make the adjustment. Testaverde looking over there the entire way. He knew what he wanted, the quick out. The receiver, on the other hand, goes inside on the pattern and the mix-up and the signals on the part of the Hurricanes. And a 28-yard field goal attempt by Mark Selig with David Kintai holding. Mike Pigza, the snapper. And it is no good. It is off to the right. And the score remains Miami 7, Penn State 7, with two minutes and eight seconds left to go. We're in the third quarter, and the battle for number one continues. Let's take another look at the hole. All right, the snapper is Mike Pigza, who's had trouble. He suffered a, a colon problem early in the season. It's all padded up. Kintai gets a bad snap and does not get it cleanly placed on the tee. And it's a missed field goal on the part of the Hurricanes and Mark Seeley. He showed Miami has the ball of the 20. That's right. Now, that was the problem. They, they told us earlier in the week there have been some problems with their snapping game because of the uh, rupture colon. Mike Pigsa has not been snapping all year. He's all padded up, had trouble with the snap there, and Kitai unable to put it down. And here's DJ Dozier. And just a couple of yards on the play, out to the 22 yard line, where George Meyer, the leading tackler for the Canes, Along with Dan Stubbs, who's the number two tackler. Both bring him down. And it'll be second down and eight. 145 and counting down. That is the time remaining in the third quarter, and we are still tied. Miami seven and Penn State seven. As Hamilton goes wide to the far side and round three wide to the near side. Hamilton comes in motion, but if he throws, usually to Dozier or to the tight end. Shaker steps away. Little puck fake, and he's going to be wrapped up at the 20 yard line. As Dan Stubbs got him. When Schaefer came out, Stubbs was just standing over there waiting for him, like he used a safety valve in case that happened. Well, Stubbs has the ability to collapse a pocket. He runs extremely well. As you see, four sacks on the day and many pressures, many of them coming on the part of Dan Stubbs. And we're back now to third down and 10. And you look for Schaefer to throw here, and he has not been successful throwing. A little play action doesn't fool him. And a shovel pass underneath, and it's going to be incomplete. Is that a gadget play? Well, that's the old Utah pass, the shuffle pass underneath. They're trying to go to Steve Smith, number 33, the fullback. Unfortunately, the timing was messed up, and it seemed that an offensive lineman touched the football before Smith had an opportunity to do so. Now, that is a forward pass, even though it is flipped that way, and just an incomplete pass and not a fumble. And if you notice the numbers on the jerseys, it is 11 to 11. John Bruno kicking, and David Kintai with the return. And once again, Bubba McDowell almost gets to the ball. At the 35, Kintai is going to lose about three on the return. 45 yards on the kick, a loss of three on the return. The Canes have the ball with 30 seconds to go in the third as Quintus McDonald was down very quickly for Penn State. We'll be back in just a moment. With 30 seconds to go in the third quarter, we're still tied at 7-7, Miami and Penn State. There will not be an overtime in the battle for number one. Miami has the ball at their own 33-yard line. In the second half, Vinny Testaverde has completed only three of eight passes for 23 yards, and he has been intercepted one time. But Penn State has not been able to capitalize. We're still tied at 7-7. That was a score at halftime. And here's Bratton. And Melvin has a couple of yards to the 35. It'll be second down and eight as Matt Johnson and Don Graham make the tackle for the Nittany Lions and will take the countdown here to the end of the quarter. Miami may go ahead and get a playoff. Let's see if they do. That's the game clock, not the 25 seconds. And he gets it off with a second, Testaverde. Drops it over the middle. This one is Highsmith. He has it, and he has the first down. 
as he goes to the 46 yard line on the final play of the third quarter. So are the Canes underway as Trey Bauer makes the tackle. We have three complete. We have one to go. We are tied 7-7 and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. We are 15 minutes away from a national champion or national champions. There will be no playoff. Here are the statistics through three. Very similar to the first half statistics. Miami still with the edge in total yardage and maintaining about a six uh, minute time of possession lead. But Penn State tried to run the football more in the third quarter. Got a little bit more successful. But as you see yards rushing just 93 for the Nittany Lions down from their normal output through the year. And the first down for Miami from the 46 Testaverde to throw. It is intercepted by Giptopoulos. To the 45, to the 40, and down at the 36-yard line. Daryl Oliver made the tackle 24 yards on the return. Four turnovers by Miami. Three interceptions. Let's take a look at it from the secondary. You see the deep zone one more time. Shane Collin in the middle of the field. It's another unusual wrinkle on the part of the Penn State defense that confused Testaverde one more time. And it's Giftopoulos with the interception, his second of the night, and he puts the Penn State offense in good position. At the 36-yard line, first down, Miami Territory. DJ Dozier, and he goes out of bounds. It'll be second down. Joe Paterno has uh, made the Penn State uh, football tradition out of defense through the years. That's the way he's gone the entire way. You're not going to see a lot of flashy things on the part of the offense. And people talk about his uniforms and his style of play uh, going in sync with the way that he uh, uh, he performs on the football field. But it is all defense. It is not a flashy offense. You're not going to see many reverses on the part of the Nittany line. Second down and seven. Hamilton in motion. Steve Smith and he well we'll give him a yard to the 32 it's going to be third down and six Jerome Brown was there let me make a correction Giftopoulos has an interception Duffy Cobbs has an interception Shane Conlon has the interception those are the three interceptions and Duffy Cobbs also has a fumble recovery for the Canes Winston Moss with a fumble recovery Selwyn Brown has an interception Bill Hawkins has an interception that's all the turnover let me just update that for us at the 32 third down and six Schaefer with pressure and is knocked away. And it will be fourth down. So the Nittany Lions unable to capitalize on the turnover. And Massimo Manka comes in. His career long is 53 yards. This last season he hit from 49 and he has hit eight of his last 11. And this one will be from 50 yards away to take the lead for the first time. Matt Kisner to hold and Greg Truitt is the snapper. That's way short. So Massimo misses from 50 and we remain tied at 7 7 and we have 14 minutes and one second left in this national championship battle. This is Charlie Jones along with Jimmy Cephalo and Bob Greasy. Miami with the ball at their own 33 taking off at taking over at the line of scrimmage after the missed field goal. And here's Melvin Bratton Shoot to the right side. And once again the defense is there and Bob Creasy we were talking about this during the timeout. It has been a defensive ball game. It's a defensive game Charlie neither team looking that good on offense. You know it's almost fitting this is a national championship game. And you say you win championships with your defense. The offense sells the tickets, but the defense win the championships, and that's what you're seeing here tonight. So you don't think we're seeing a sloppy offensive game that the defenses are just dominating both sides? I think you're seeing a sloppy offensive <laughs> game because of the defense. Okay, all right. Second and 11, Testaverde to throw over the middle. Here's Bratton, and he's out to the 44, maybe the 45-yard line. 
And he's got the first down. Bauer with the tackle and a gain of 12 yards on the play. And the running backs, uh, Melvin Bratton and Alonzo Highsmith, are playing a more important factor as we go down through the fourth quarter because the Penn State deep zones are taking it away, the deep passing game of Vinny Testaverde. There you see a comparison. Schaefer just 4 of 14. And Testaverde just under 50%. And a 200 yard difference. And he comes down at the Penn State 48 yard line. Eddie Johnson was the man who hit him. And it's going to be second down in a couple after he picks up eight yards on the play. And I'm wondering now if the Canes are going to stay on the ground. They have a great running attack. You know, their 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 rushers average, you know, 4.2, 5.8. You know, high numbers as far as rushing yardage is concerned. They'll go to the rushing attack and then they get away from it. Maybe they'll stay with it here as Highsmith slips. He may break clean. He's to the 30 and goes to the 27 yard line. 19 yards. Check that 21 yards. Isom and Henderson finally write him down. And who else to go to in, in this situation but Alonzo Highsmith. You want to know who Vinny Testaverde's vote for the Heisman Trophy was? That man sitting on the ground with a leg cramp, Alonzo Highsmith. He thinks he's the best football player in the country, and he shows you why on that run. And Highsmith this past season averaging 4.2 yards a carry and averaging 13.9 yards a reception. So it has been the rushing attack now Sparking the cage. We've got a timeout. We are tied at 7 7. We'll be back to the championship battle in just a moment. Highsmith has rushed now for 92 yards. We still have 12 minutes to go in the ballgame. And Penn State did not allow 100 yards rushing. The most was Paul Palmer of Tipoli at 96. Bob? Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator for Miami, says we've got a good rushing attack, but we hate to stay with it too long because you're taking the ball out of Testaverde's hands. Well, they may win the championship with a running game. And here's Bratton, and he is pushed out of bounds. Don Graham bumped him out. It would be hard to take the ball out of Testaverde's hands, but perhaps in this case you have to. Well, when you take a look at the entire Miami offense, there's skilled people. You've got a bunch of first-round draft choice. Obviously, Testaverde, Melvin Bratton, we mentioned earlier, will be one when he graduates. Alonzo Highsmith is the best fullback in the country coming into the draft this year. So who do you give the football to? There's only one ball. If you could cut it up in four or five spots, Miami would have a heck of a deal. And you'd have had more receptions when you were playing. I just <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Second and nine at the 27. Now they'll throw. It's Jeff Tiberti rolling. And it is pulled down. No. He did not get the one foot inbounds. Brian Blades, the intended receiver. Now, Testaverde going to his left. Not a lot of people realize this, but Testaverde, right handed, he throws. He bats and he shoots a bow and arrow. He left, shoots a shoot. bow and arrow left handed. Right handed, right handed. Left handed, he writes, sides autographs, left handed. He eats left handed and he shoots a gun left handed. And that is an incredible catch by Blades on the corner. He'd need one foot down in college ball, of course, just outside of the boundary. So it's not hard for Testaverde to go to his left or his right. They're down and nine. Pass is complete to Bratton, and Bratton is down at the 21-yard line, so he'll have about six on the play. And it's going to be fourth down and three. Now, do you go with a field goal attempt? First half of the ball game. You bet you you do. Similar, similar situation. They went for the first down. National championship football game, 21 yards at seven, 28 yards. You've got to go for the field goal and take the lead. The Miami defense has done a good job, and it's in the hands right now, or at least the foot, of Mark Seeley. From 38 yards away, and Seeley, remember, missed from 28 yards. This is from 38 yards. And it is good from 38 yards away. And Miami leads for the second time in the ballgame. The score, the Canes 10, the Nittany Lions 7 will be back with a kickoff. Mark Selig with the successful field goal 
An important moment in his life, not only for the three points. Not just for the three points. He puts Miami up in the national championship football game, but Mark Schilling has dedicated this football game to his father, who died about 10 years ago. And when asked why he never spoke about this before, he said, well, I never thought it'd be a significant part in maybe winning a game. And here it is, a national championship game, maybe looking up and saying, hey, that one was for you, Dad. Miami 10, Penn State 7, and the reaction of Joe Paterno. He's saying, let's go, let's go, let's get it back. All right, let's see if they can. Coates and Thomas are the deep backs. Coates is 49 on the right, Blair Thomas is 32 on the left. 11 minutes and 49 seconds left to go for the national title. And Miami is up by three. Thomas at the eight yard line to the 20 and he just scrambles out to about the 28 yard line so we'll give him 20 yards on the return and Penn State goes to work in their own territory. And now we find out what kind of a winner John Schaefer was. We mentioned 65 and one since the seventh grade. You know, they said about him in the past, he doesn't throw very well, he doesn't run very well, but he does win football games. Those same words were first used by Rip Engel, the head coach at Brown, when he was describing a skinny little scrawny left-handed quarterback by the name of Joe, Joe Paterno. And we have on the ground, that's Quintus McDonald, who is down with a leg cramp. And so the clock is stopped with 11.44 left to go. We'll take an injury timeout. The Canes leading the Nittany Lions by 3, 10 to 7. All right, uh, the injured player now being taken off. We'll get back to that story in just a moment. But first, a very good defensive ball game, a little sloppy offensively. Uh, how does Penn State get back into it, Jimmy? Well, I think they got to get the football into the hands of D.J. Dozier. I said earlier in the telecast that he's got to touch the ball 20 or so times a football game, but he seems to have been non-existent lately, at least in the last couple of minutes. I think he has to carry the football for them to get back into it. Rob, what about their passing Going three game? three points behind. Yeah. I think uh, Schaefer is in a good situation. He had to play it from strength. Don't play uh, outside of yourself. Stay within yourself. Do the things that you do best. Get the running game going, the short passing. Only three points down. They can get down and tie it or get a touchdown to go ahead and win. And there's still a lot of time. All right, we have 11 minutes and 44 seconds. And a first down. And here is Dozier. He stumbles a bit as he makes his move. Penn State averaging only three yards per play tonight on offense. And that, of course, is a credit also to the Kane defense. Hurricane defense has really played well. Oh, yeah, they've got a lot of players back there as well. Benny Blades. Now, here's a player, All-American consensus. We haven't talked about uh, a lot tonight, but that's because Joe Paterno said, we've got to stay away from Benny Blades if we want to win the football game. Seems like they've been doing it all night long. Second down, Schaefer to throw. There's pressure, and he's sacked. Five sacks. And Rod Carter and Jerome Brown team up for this one. Woo. Brown and Carter coming from the same side. They said earlier they've got a double team. Brown, are they trying to? He's just bullying his way through. And then from the backside, that's Rod Carter with a big sack. Hey, it's tough when you've got people. And salute. All right, Jerome. <laughs> They came in dressed in battle fatigues, and They're that ready. was a salute to the captain on the sideline. <laughs> Third down and 18. And here's Dozier, Dozier to the 30. Dozier to the 35. And he's going to be about four yards shy of the first down. Selwyn Brown with the tackle. He picks up 13, he needed 18. And that means that John Bruno will come in to punt. Dozier now has rushed for 91 yards. Ten minutes exactly left to go. It'll be Bruno to David Kintai. <laughs> this pressure every time 
coming from Bubba McDowell. And he's been tied to the 20, and he'll be racked up at the 21 yard line. 48 yard kick, a five yard return. And Kurt Bernier is the man who was down as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. By John Bruno. This is Charlie Jones along with Jimmy Cephalo and Bob Greasy in the national championship game, the battle for number one, where we have nine minutes and 37 seconds left. The University of Miami leading Penn State 10 to 7, and the Canes have the ball. And here's Melvin Bratton. And Bratton goes to the 34 yard line. So he picks up 13 yards in the first down. Don Graham makes the tackle. Melvin Bratton runs like a little bumblebee. He's got good size, not a great blocker, but he can really buzz around the defense. We mentioned earlier that Highsmith is uh, coming up to 100 yard rushing against the Penn State defense that has not done it this year. Well, Highsmith has not had 100 yards. The only one for Miami to do it has been Melvin Bratton. And here is Bratton. And this time he'll lose a step. They're going to mark it the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second down and 10 as Trey Bauer makes the tackle. Okay. Now we're moving on the nine minute mark and early on everyone expected that Penn State wanted to use up the clock. Now the Canes with the lead albeit three points 10 seven. He could be content with running some time down. Second down. Testaverde with both backs into block throws and it is intercepted. for Penn State, two for Conlon. 38 yards on the return, five yard line, first down, goal to go with a national championship in the balance. Remember when you were a kid growing up, you dreamt about things like maybe playing at a national championship football game, fourth quarter, you're down by three points, you make a big interception. That's exactly what Shane Conlon did, and his dreams of his youth may come true tonight. From the power on, a scramble for the ball. There was a misconnection on the snap. And it will be second down goal to go. Keith Radicek, the center. Senior from Pittsburgh, his brother Scott, a linebacker with Kansas City. He just doesn't get the ball, or maybe he's starting to pull out a little bit to it. What happens is the center starts his block before the center gets the ball. Obviously, it's not a it's not a smooth snap, but the center has got to snap the ball first and then get to his block. And Penn State wants a timeout to talk it over. We'll be back in just a moment. Let's go back to that last interception. Conlon and another linebacker lined up here. The tight end's going to run straight up the field. Now watch as Conlon and the other linebacker go straight back. And Conlon says, you're in my way. Scoot over there. And it's as if Testaverde saw the inside linebacker, but not Conlon. Tried to throw it over his head and was picked off by Conlon for the second time today. And Trey Bauer, the inside linebacker, who then came up and was doing the congratulations. And the ball now at the six yard line after the miscue on the snap. Second down goal to go. Testaverde sitting on the sideline. Manoa and Dozier, the running back. And it's Dozier. Dozier scores.
Eight minutes and 13 seconds left in the ball game. And now the extra point attempt. Massimo Manko. And it is good. Penn State 14. Miami 10. The replay for the score. Dozier takes it wide and cuts back. But nice block by Keith Radisek, number 56, the center, in for the score and a Penn State lead. And it is set up by the Penn State defense and is set up by a Penn State linebacker, Shane Conlon, with the interception. Six yards on the five yards on the drive in two plays. And the score coming from six yards out, of course, the fumble, the loss of a yard. And it's 14 10. But a lot of time for the Canes. Eight minutes and 13 seconds. And they have the arm of Benny Testaverde. And he has not been playing that well thus far. But can he do it? Here's another look at DJ Dozier. DJ, a very religious young man. In fact, when we were shooting the headshots of all the players on Sunday, he was with a group of five. The last one's to be shot because he came back from church. And that's exactly, he wasn't tired at the end. He was kneeling down in the, prayer, and it's, it's a ritual that he goes through after every touchdown. Only the second man in Penn State history, as you saw, to rush for more than 3,000 yards. And Massimo Manka to kick off. And Bratton is the deep back. And this is down in the end zone for the touchback. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Charlie, there's no question that at this point in time, Vinny Testaverde is frustrated and confused. Now, the teams exchanged all 11 game films for this year, but the one that Joe Paterno wanted was last year's Sugar Bowl. He called Johnny Majors at Tennessee, and Tennessee beat the University of Miami 35-7. Johnny Majors was at Pittsburgh, but Johnson says, no, I can't do it. Get back to it in just a second. Okay. And here's Alonzo Highsmith to the 25, the 30. 35, he's to the 40, and down at the 42-yard line, it was Duffy Cobbs who saved the day, or he could well have scored. And apparently Alonzo Highsmith had that same dream as a young man about being the hero of a national championship football game. Again, the linebacker playing fullback, refusing to go down, running over people. Ray Isom, he runs over one time. Another defender, he still refuses to fall on the ground. And Alonzo, Alonzo 114 yards rushing in 16 carries, 42-yard line, first down. And here he comes again. And he has four yards to the 46. Second down and six. Let's go back to your story, Bob. In last year's Sugar Bowl game, Testaverde threw three interceptions, was sacked eight times, and Paterno called Majors for the film, and Johnny Major says, no, I know Jimmy Johnson. And Paterno turned to his assistant and says, I want that film. Just get it. I don't know. I don't care how you get it. And Paterno told us the other day, said, well, we got it, but I don't know where we got it from. Melvin Bratton up to his feet, maybe just a little late cramp. That was, the, that, that's all that, is. that was the worst game that Testaverde has had in his career up until this point. He is not playing well tonight, and it's because, I think, that Penn State is doing several different things and has confused him and, and frustrated him, taking away those big plays. Well, you made the statement earlier that Joe Paterno wanted to get inside of his head and cause a little confusion. You know, as a quarterback, that can be deadly if they can do it. And here's Testaverde to throw. Let's see if he can come back, and he does as he goes to Alfredo Roberts, his tight end. Seven minutes and 12 seconds left for the title. From Paramus, New Jersey, watch number 35. From the reverse angle this time, Testaverde wanted to go downfield to Michael Irvin, but he was being covered by Shane Conlon. And there's the fumble on the part of Alfredo Roberts, clearly on his way down. Trey Bauer making sure, number 35, that he doesn't get anywhere near that fumble. The ball at the Miami 49-yard line and a first down for Penn State. And now Schaefer steps away, and the Nittany Lions stop the clock with seven minutes and 12 seconds left. They lead 
14 to 10. And we'll be back in just a moment to the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. This is Charlie Jones with Jimmy Cephalo and Bob Greasy. We're at the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. This is the 16th edition. Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona. The temperature dropping down in the 40s. And Alfredo Roberts clearly upset about the fumble after the reception. And that's clearly understandable. You know, big, tough football players, but to get in this situation, and they're all human, and Alfredo Roberts feeling it now. Dozier back to the line of scrimmage. And it'll be second down and 10. We've talked about the miscues of Miami. Here they are six turnovers, one missed field goal, five drop passes. They allowed three sacks, penalized eight times. And they trail by four, 14 to 10. And of course, that's just one play away from the arm of any Testaverde. Don't forget that. And it is second down and 10. And Schaefer to throw. And this pass is complete at the 43 yard line to Brian Cyberling, the tight end. Who is a member of the National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete, was named as one. George Meyer Jr. there for the defense, 43 yard line, eight of six. Third down and four, and the clock ticks away. Alfredo Roberts getting the condolences of his teammates, saying, Keep your head up, hey, and you're right, Charlie. One pass by Vinny Testaverde gets this in football game right back and a national championship as well. And here is Schaefer with pressure. He throws and is knocked away. He was going to Ray Roundtree, and Don Ellis made the defensive play. And once again, the balance could well hang on the foot of John Bruno, who has had an excellent evening kicking. Particularly early in the ball game, he really kept the Nittany Lions in the game. And David Kintai is set for the return. This is the eighth punt for John Bruno. Caught it down and it gets away, slipping out of the grasp. 43 yards on the kick. Of course, he could have caught it if he could have run under it. But just Sherrod Reigns just simply could not get there in time. The ball goes into the end zone for the touchback. We'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. Well, the playoffs, the Jets and the Browns, as tomorrow at 12 Eastern time. Uh, the big question is, who do you like? So Jimmy Cephalo, who do you like? Put you on the spot. I like the Cleveland Browns. I mean, how can you not? We're talking about uh, Bernie Kosar, and uh, this is one of the other great Miami quarterbacks. I like Kosar in that football game. He goes right back to Alfredo Roberts. The pass is complete. A flag is down. I like that call. He came back looking for Roberts, and he passes right to him and puts him right back in the ball game. And we had markers on the play. And here's the call. Offensive pass interference. So Miami continues to self-destruct as they take the ball back to the 10. Charlie, you're right about going right back to Alfredo Roberts. It could be deadly to the psyche of a receiver. You drop a pass, you make a big mistake, and if you don't get the football back again, you may never want it the rest of the football game. And it's a real tribute to Alfredo Roberts to go back and say, hey, Vinny, you throw me the football. I got one. The last time I dropped it, I won't drop it again. And he did. Offensive pass in his 10 yards and the loss of down back to the 10. So it is second down and 20. And on the draw, here's Heisman. No game. It's going to be third down and 20. Charlie, the confidence of the Miami offense has got to be shaken at this point. Four interceptions, two fumbles. They've turned the ball over six times. It's almost as if, you know, what's going to happen next? I can guarantee you that Testaverde is short-arming the ball a little bit, making sure that he sees all the defensive players before he throws the football. What do you mean by short-arming? Well, he's not, not really firing it. He's uh, making sure he's a little hesitant, a little tentative. Goes deep and it is incomplete. Two receivers in the same area. Urban was there and Alfredo Roberts was also there. 
As was Marcus Henderson, the defensive back for Penn State. Here's another look. All right, Alfredo Roberts the entire way. That's Shane Collin, number 31, trying to cover him down the middle of the field. It's his own. Michael Irvin and Roberts in the same area, but you know he's going after it all the way. Alfredo Roberts wanting to make up for the drop ball and uh, no lack of effort, certainly not at all, by Alfredo Roberts. He goes with the kick, takes the Miami roll, then taken on the second hop by Jim Coach. He'll get a couple of yards on the return, four yards on the return, a 49-yard kick, and J.C. Penny was down very quickly on the coverage team. We haven't seen J.C. as a return man since early in the ballgame. And now Penn State has the ball, 4.56, time remaining. Penn State leads 14 to 10. At their own 43 yard line, first down. No hurricanes inside, but lions are everywhere. Well, that's the Fiesta forecast. Penn State number one, don't celebrate too soon. 4.56, that is the time remaining. And on the reverse is Ray Roundtree. And Roundtree to about the 46 yard line. He ran that reverse eight times during this past season. And Testaverde on the phone with the coaches upstairs. Bob, you think an unusual call? You come down, you have not run a reverse all year. It is not a major part of your offense. There's uh, four minutes and 28 seconds left in the football game. you got to control it. Is that a surprise to you? I think it was Paterno's way of getting a big play into his offense. I, I think that he thought that Miami was not expecting it, and that was a way to maybe surprise him a little bit. He's done that before this season. And, of course, Roundtree made a point to stay in bounds and work some time off of the clock. And here's Dozier. They have a couple of yards to the 48-yard line. And it's going to be third down and five. Jimmy Johnson, the head coach of the game. There's plenty the of time on the Go clock ahead, yeah. for the University of Miami. They don't have to start using timeouts yet. Interesting situation for Penn State. Do you throw the football? Third down, five yards to go. You got to control the ball. I think you throw it. What do you say, Bob? You go with what got you here, and I think that's the run, Jimmy. Third and five. Yeah, that's why I'm the <laughs> here the quarterback. <laughs> Manoa and Dan Cilio drops him for a loss of two. And we've got a timeout taken by Miami. Miami now with two timeouts left. Penn State has one. We'll be back in a moment. Three minutes and 18 seconds left. Miami, two timeouts. Penn State, one timeout. And Miami now will have an opportunity as John Bruno will be kicking to David Kintock. And watch for number 48, Bubba McDowell of the Canes. He's on the far side, and he has been close to blocking a putt. And here he comes, and he doesn't get there. And Kintai on the return. And he's down around the 22-yard line. 40 yards on the kick, a seven-yard return. Vernier again there for Penn State. And the award-winning season, Heisman Trophy, Maxwell Trophy, Davy O'Brien, Walter Camp, Consistence All-American, TD Club College Athlete of the Year, Touchdown Club College Athlete of the Year. And now time is running out to be number one. So let's see what he can do from his own 23-yard line. He has pressure. Fights his way out to the 27-yard line. He scrambles for four, and his second down is six. Trey Bauer with the tackle, and the clock continues to move. Charlie, Penn State has played the Heisman Trophy winner three of the last five years and beaten him all three times. So Testaverde, not by himself and not doing so well on New Year's Day, or January 2nd this year, against Penn State. It is second and six. Intercepted by Trey Bauer. In and out of his arm. Two thirty-one left. 
Charlie, as good as Testaverde is, and as many of awards as he has won, his confidence now is a little bit shaken. He sees linebackers coming when he doesn't see them. He could come from nowhere. They're almost picking off his passes. He is the man that has to bring him down to win the national championship, and their leader is shaken. Third down and six, three wide receivers, two and a half minutes to go, trailing by four. Has time, and he goes deep to Bratton. Does he get it? No. He throws it inside, and he had to come back for it. Marcus Henderson has the coverage. Do you take a big gamble now with 2.24 left? I don't think so. Miami has two timeouts left. Their defense has been playing fairly well. I think you kick it away and try to come back and give it to Vinny Testaverde with a little time left. He's got the arm that can get you a touchdown and a national championship in one series. So you, they're going to go with it, though. If you go for it here, Charlie, the whole game is on the line right here. If you one miss one. it, it's over. Here it is for the title. Nine seconds on the 25-second clock. It's there, first down to Brian Blades. Blades down the sideline, all the way to the Penn State 41-yard line. 32 yards, it was fourth and six. Marcus Henderson finally got him. Prior to that play in the second half, Testaverde only 7 of 18, 57 yards, three touchdowns, but there he is, just one throw away. Hey, and it tells you something about the Heisman Trophy winner. He wasn't ready to give it up yet. Yeah, they went for it and fourth down, and look at Blades dancing down the sideline. Finally pushed out. A big play by both Blades and Testaverde. Far side, pass is there. And it is Blades again. Duffy Cobbs makes the tackle. Clock moves. There's not a two-minute warning in college ball. It'll just keep on moving. 35-yard line. Second down. Second and three. As time he throws, it is there this time for Perryman. Close to the 25-yard line. And we'll stop the clock. Eddie Johnson making the stop for the Nittany Lions. They stop the clock for the first down. And the clock will start when the ball is ready for play. It's at the 26. Miami still with two timeouts. Penn State with one. Over the middle. Urban slips and goes down at the 22. Has four. Second down and six. Three times in a row, Testaverde went to that quick out to the outside. Penn State seemed content to give it up. They've been doing it all night. Why change now? That time, he goes to Michael Irvin, the playmaker. He's the one you want to go to when it's in the clutch. Testaverde. Irvin at the 10. A gain of 12. Not taking the timeout. That's for the first down. The clock being stopped in college ball. It shouldn't end any other way, Charlie. That's the way Top it's offensive to team gets a good defensive team playing for the national championship in the last minute of the season. And the man voted the best player in the country is the one directing him down. You know, let's talk about Vinny Testaverde. Down here, fourth and six, <laughs> not completing a lot of passes. He's got the guts to stand up and get the first down and lead him down the field. Tells you a lot about that young man. It came down to one play, and he did it. At the 27-yard line, Shane Conlon, the injured player. Fourth down and six back at the 27-yard line. And Testaverde did it. Well, he and he has hit five consecutive completions. Well, he has. And as Jimmy pointed out, he's throwing to the outside, Charlie, on the corners, who are playing one-on-one -on, -one on the wide receivers. When he's gotten in trouble, he's thrown the ball to the middle of the field, and linebackers that he did not see have picked the ball off. Great strategy on the part of Penn State to hide Conlon inside, do some different things with their linebackers, but the weakness of that defense, Testaverde has found, is on the outside throwing those quick outs. Don't forget Brian Blades. He caught that pass on fourth and six. It takes two to make the first down. And a big play. 
Mr. Verdi throws. It is complete at the five yard line to Michael Irvin. Henderson wrestles him down at the five. It'll be second down goal to go. The score, 14 to 10. Forget about the field goal. The margin is four. By the way, Brian Blades, five reception, 81 yards, and the key reception of the ball game back and forth at six. Here's Testaverde. Looks right, and he is brought down. Tim Johnson got it. Four sacks for Penn State. And Miami takes a timeout. They have one left. Testaverde wanted to go to the right to that quick out one more time, but the defensive back has the end of the end zone to help him out there. Testaverde could not throw the football, and it's Tim Johnson, number 55, with the sack. Quick timeout on the part of Testaverde. Heads up play with just 25 seconds left. Timeouts remaining, and the time remaining in the battle for the national championship. Bratton scored first for Miami from a yard out. Schaefer then scored from a yard out, capping a 74-yard drive for Penn State. Mark Seelig with a 38-yard field goal, and Dozier from six yards out. And that followed the Conlon interception that set up that touchdown. And by the way, Bill Hawkins' interception set up the Miami drive. So it is 14 to 10, and the countdown continue. Conlon stays in. 13 yard line. Third down and goal. Incomplete. Incomplete. Fourth down. National Championship. Since the seventh grade is now 66 and one. 
And Joe Paterno has won his 199th game. You can talk about numbers for the next week, but there's only one that counts, and that's number one. It's an incredible football game by both teams, though. A storybook season for the University of Miami coming in at 11-0, registering the first undefeated season, the regular year on the part of the University of Miami. And now Penn State will undoubtedly be crowned the national champion. Offensive guide for Penn State, Dan Morgan, at 6'6", 272 pounds. Every time we saw him this week, he said, say something about the offensive line. Say something about the offensive line. They were magnificent. Penn State was magnificent. And I think the Canes were also. It's just the way that it ought to be. It came down to the last minute of play for the national title. And Vinny Testaverde back at fourth and six. And it could have been over several minutes ago. Well, he showed a great deal of character as well, yeah. Bob, with uh, fourth and six, as you mentioned, throwing the football out to the blades and then getting the first down and giving his team an opportunity to win the football game. And that's what he had to do, Bob. I think you have to give credit to Joe Paterno and his staff for doing an outstanding job of shutting down Testaverde and winning the national championship. Let's go down to Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad? Shane, John, Shane, you guys, you play, that's the way you win a national championship, right out there on the field. Oh, exactly. They were talking about our defensive backs being too short. Man, they didn't want to catch the ball. They just came up and rocked them. That's the key to the game. They didn't want to catch the ball. You guys wanted to go out and finish up, but it seems to me you kept them in third and long all the time. How'd you do that? Uh, it's just a great effort by our, our front people. It's just a great effort by the whole team. I mean, we, we knew we could beat them. We had, we had it in our minds we could beat them all along, and we just took off and did it. All right, here's good. Coach Paterno here. Coach. Congratulations, Coach. I just, I just told Shane, who are we here? All right, I just told Shane, this is the way you win a national championship out on the field. Well, I always hoped you would that way. I think our kids played a, a great game. They beat a great football team tonight. I, I think our defense played about as great a college football game as I've ever seen. They were so persistent, so persistent, they just destroyed the passing ribbon of mine. Yeah, well, I think our defensive coaches did a super job getting the kids ready. I mean, I came up with the big plays. They've done that now for two years. They're a great bunch of kids. You've won a lot of big games, but this is the biggest one. Well, it's one of the biggest ones, certainly. Uh, we've had a lot of luck in our life, and I have uh, been fortunate to be around a lot of great young people and great coaches. And I just thank the good Lord for everything he's given me. All right, congratulations, Coach. You guys are number one. Well, I think so. All right, back up to Bob Costas. Ahmad, thank you very much. As we pointed out at the very beginning of the game, a year ago at the Orange Bowl, it was there for Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions against Oklahoma. The Sooners beat them, and they became the national champions. A second chance exactly a year later, and Penn State capitalizes, upsetting Miami, which had been a touchdown favorite. The Nittany Lions have a second national championship. You remember they got one a few years ago with a Sugar Bowl victory to climax a big season with a win over Georgia that gave them the national championship on that occasion. This is the 100th season of Penn State football, and they celebrate that century of excellence with a national title tonight. Vinny Testaverde unofficially threw for 285 yards, but of course he had the five interceptions among seven Miami turnovers. What do they say about Schaefer? All he does is win. 66 and one since the seventh grade. Only the Orange Bowl loss last year against Oklahoma. Schaefer was just five of 16 for 53 yards, had one intercepted, but he comes out on the winning side. Penn State with the national championship, 14-10. We'll be back with more from Tempe, Arizona, in just a moment. The Sun Kissed outstanding players in tonight's ballgame Shane Collin for Penn State with two interceptions and eight tackles. Alonzo Highsmith for Miami, 18 carries. He rushed for 119 yards, and each player will receive a special trophy in honor of his achievement. In tonight's game, and Sunkist will donate $2,500 to the General Scholarship Fund of Penn State in Miami in their name. The final score Penn State 14 and Miami 10. And 
I think it'll be said time and time again the way to win the national championship is on the field like we have seen here. Oh I think so. I think this makes a big call to the NCAA for a national championship game to be played each and every year. They begin their convention this coming week in San Diego and uh, I think many people are saying I hope they finally realize this is the kind of <laughs> this is the way to win a national championship by playing on the field. Well again defense wins championships and we saw it here tonight. Two good defenses and uh, you got to give your credit to uh, Joe Paterno and his staff for coming in and stopping of any test of in that offense stopping him cold five interceptions and seven turnovers. But I don't want the loss to be the end of the world for the Miami Canes. They had a great season. They had a tough time tonight against Penn State and you you know that ball club and I understand they've got a couple of young quarterbacks that could be just as good as Vinny Testaverde. Well they are they're a young ball club and they'll be back but I think what uh, we talked about early and that is Joe Paterno wanted to get inside of Testaverde's head make him a little bit confused uh, make him uh, rat get him rattled a little bit and you had some problems and it happened last year in the uh, Sugar Bowl against Tennessee and I think it happened here again this evening quarterback when you're playing that style of defense can't do it all himself. What about Penn State? They well, just continue to do it. They do. Penn State had uh, 17 fifth year seniors and to a man they said that we all decided to come back for our fifth year walking off the Orange Bowl field last year after being beaten by Oklahoma. They felt to a man that they could win a national championship and they saw the dream come true tonight. It has been the Sun Kiss Fiesta Bowl the final once again. It is Penn State the national champion defeating Miami by a score of 14 to 10 for Bob Greasy Jimmy Cephalo I'm Charlie Jones let's go to Bob Costas Bob. And all that remains now Charlie is to say good night a national a champion has been crowned and that football. championship belongs of games to the Penn State the Nittany Lions time. John Schaefer heading off following the 14 10 victory. These are unofficial numbers but in terms of total offense Miami had 445 yards to just 152 for Penn State. A season to remember is over now in college football. Thousands of games played, a few individuals honored, a new national champion crowned. But the curtain also comes down in a different sense tonight. We focus on the headliners and the pro prospects, and we forget that for many of these participants, it's the end of football, the end of an essentially youthful experience. They move on now to careers and responsibilities. Time passes, but the memories last. This is the time. And even after the bitter taste of this defeat fades away for Jimmy Johnson and for Vinny Testaverde, we hope they too will have fond memories of the experience of this college football season, a season which ends without a national title for them and with the national championship for Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions of Penn State. We'll see you tomorrow at 12 Eastern time with NFL 86 before the Browns Jets game. So long from the Fiesta Bowl. Promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines, serving 13 cities in Asia and the Pacific. United, a fresh breeze across the Pacific. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports. Proud to be the network of the 1988 Summer Olympic Games.